in a business full of success, championships, and legacy, also comes greed, jealousy, and attitude. Men and women whose dream is to achieve ultimate immortality will stop at nothing trying to do so. And when the most desperate to accomplish their dream see an opportunity, they will strike when it's least expected. Respect, retribution, honor, and glory ride on the line tonight. The best of the best will put their bodies on the line and their legacies at stake. The most feared woman on planet Earth has left bodies soulless time and time again, but will her latest challenger be the one who finally end her warpath? Ultimate bragging rights are on the line between the egotistical star of the now and a man looking to go from undesirable to undeniable. A blue chipper athlete who has made waves since his Friday night debut is looking to see his name in the lights as he targets the top dog trying to do so. This Scottish warrior is out to teach this young prospect a lesson in respect. A beast who has added to his legendary list of victims in recent weeks now sets his sights on becoming an 11-time champion. The reigning, defending, fighter that opposes him has been to hell and back over the last year, proving he is deserving of his spot and willing to fight as if every last breath depends on it. Who will leave the land up north at the absolute top of this business? Personal struggles, one-upsmanship, sacrifice, and gold. These superstars will put it all on the line tonight at Vengeance. It's a night that features first time ever matches, five championship bouts, and scores to be settled. Welcome to Vancouver, Canada. Welcome to Vengeance. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. What better way to kick things off live from the Rogers Arena, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, WWE Vengeance, Sunday night, May the 14th, 2023, then with the Cruiserweight Championship of the World on the line. It is gonna be an action-packed night and we are wasting no time kicking things off. The Emperor of Lucha Libre, the leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar. Escobar earning himself another Cruiserweight Championship opportunity defeating the champion's son, Dominic Mysterio, a few weeks ago on SmackDown in that epic grudge match. And this is, of course, a rematch from WrestleMania Saturday back in February. Santos Escobar, all throughout March and April, has been chomping at the bit to earn another opportunity at the Master of the 619. The man who hit him with that very 619 and knocked his lights out in the biggest show of the year, Rey Mysterio, again back in February on WrestleMania Saturday. These two men tore down the house in Tampa Bay, Florida all those months ago. Fast forward to tonight. We are live, Vengeance, Vancouver, Canada, and the prestigious Cruiserweight Championship of the World that has been held by so many greats. The champion himself, Rey Mysterio, Dean Malenko, Chris Jericho, Eddie Guerrero. The list goes on and on. Santos Escobar looking to add his name to that hat yet again tonight. But he's got to keep down the greatest mask of all time, the reigning and defending cruiserweight champion of the world, who's been on the ride of a lifetime since winning the gold yet again, back on January the 1st at the Royal Rumble. So far in his championship reign, Ray has defeated the one and only Ricochet not once but twice. He has retained the gold over Humberto Carrillo, over Axiom, and of course the matchup at WrestleMania against Santos Escobar. Rey Mysterio, a decorated athlete throughout his Hall of Fame career. This isn't his first rodeo as the Cruiserweight Champion. He went back to his roots in the Cruiserweight division, won the gold, as we mentioned, back at the Royal Rumble at the top of the year, and has been a defending champion ever since. We speculated on SmackDown that had Santos Escobar truly just stepped up and challenged Rey to a rematch, Rey Mysterio very well may have accepted. 
But Santos Escobar, so in his own mind, so upset that Rey Mysterio defeated him at WrestleMania, he wanted to go through Dominic. When Dominic wanted to get his hands on Escobar, there was a big, big time score to settle on SmackDown between those two. And at the end of the night, Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar earning himself said opportunity. It's going to be a great matchup to kick things off in Vengeance. you got to wonder Rey Mysterio's condition. Just 48 hours after that matchup with Legado's Cruz del Toro on SmackDown. A successful one for Rey. It was a grueling cruiserweight bout all the way through. Is he at 100% tonight heading into this bout with Santos Escobar? We're going to find out in moments. Cruiserweight Championship of the World is on the line here tonight in Vancouver. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing in at 200 pounds, Santos Escobar. And his opponent from San Diego, California, weighing in at 175 pounds. He is the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Rey Mysterio! It was one year ago at this time that Santos Escobar was on top of the Cruiserweight division as its champion. And ever since then, ever since he lost the gold last June, Escobar has slowly but surely been trying to get back into contention and regain the gold. Will Escobar become a three-time Cruiserweight Champion here tonight in Vancouver? Or is the reign of the master of the 619, Rey Mysterio, set to roll on past Vengeance? It is going to be an action-packed night, seven huge matches. The first one kicking us off, representing Friday Night SmackDown. WrestleMania rematch, you got to wonder, Santos Escobar, as he immediately takes out Rey and goes for the quick cover on Mysterio. Mysterio gets the shoulder up. Got to wonder how many times Escobar has watched back that bout from WrestleMania and has tried to learn what he did wrong in that match. Learn from his mistakes. And trying not to make the same tonight here at Vengeance. Same thing goes for Rey Mysterio. Has he watched back the match against Santos Escobar at WrestleMania? Has Rey tried to change up his strategy to throw off the Emperor of Lucha Libre? We'll find that out as this matchup progresses, but so far, Escobar all over the Cruiserweight Champion of the World, and he sends him to the outside of the ring. Rey Mysterio now trying to cut off Escobar, and Rey sends Santos back inside the squared circle. They're going to keep things inside the ropes tonight. It's the match for the 619, at least so far. But thank you for joining us. We are live here tonight, Rogers Arena, Vancouver, Canada, continuing on our Canadian tour. It's been a great week already here in the WWE. And thank you for joining us live here at Vengeance. Mysterio off the tornado, DDT follows it up with a drop kick there. Almost said basement drop kick, but not necessarily. Santos takes an A against the boots right to the side of the head. Mysterio not able to put Escobar away just yet, and I think he knows that, but trying to get in the psyche of his challenger tonight. And Mysterio knows that it was not an easy task to retain the Cruiserweight title back in Tampa Bay at WrestleMania. It was a hard-fought matchup on both ends. As Escobar now to the outside, and the tide is shifting as Rey Mysterio, your Cruiserweight champion, is now in control. And here comes Rey! Oh my goodness! Tornado DDT through the ropes and to the outside! What a maneuver by the Cruiserweight Champion who has taken Escobar off his game. Do not count out the Champion of the World, Rey Mysterio. Escobar trying to get back into the ring on Mysterio's tails, but Rey not having none of it. Nice pop-up Frankensteiner and Rey. Smart to go in the cover there. No Santos might have his eggs scrambled off that Tornado GDT, but Escobar hangs in another moment. As we mentioned, Rey Mysterio is making his entrance a few minutes ago. What is the condition of Rey just 48 hours after that grueling matchup with Cruz del Toro on SmackDown? Escobar stacking on Mysterio with one of his best maneuvers, but not just yet as Rey gets the shoulder up. Escobar going for the kill early. The Rey Mysterio as tough as they come. The biggest little man in WWE history, a heart a size of gold. Now it's Rey Mysterio on the outside of the ring. A little bit of roll reversal here as Rey is on spaghetti legs, and here comes Escobar, the suicide dive through the ropes, taking out the Cruiserweight Champion. 
We have never once doubted the abilities of Santos Escobar, a Cruiserweight Champion one time in NXT. Won the title for a second time one year ago at Backlash. Was holding it during this time last year. Looking to become a three-time champion here tonight. Escobar off that suicide dive and those maneuvers inside the squared circle. Taking control and a suplex on the outside of the ring. And it's little things like that, taking things to the outskirts of the squared circle that Escobar has incorporated in his blueprint tonight to try to throw off the game of the Cruiserweight Champion, but Ray meets him with an enziguri. This guy's got to be careful here. Referee is at a count of six. Would hate to see this Cruiserweight Championship high-profile matchup go to a double countout. Remains to be seen. Escobar down. Rey Mysterio back inside the squared circle. Wait a minute. Rey Mysterio over the top rope. Crossbody takes down the challenger. Cruiserweight action at its finest here tonight to kick things off live from Vancouver. Nobody does Universe Mode live premiere pay-per-view events quite like us on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar showing us why. Escobar trying to make his way back into the side of the ring and really just trying to regroup right now as the Cruiserweight Champion has had an answer for everything Escobar has thrown at him so far. Oh, there's a whiplash. Vicious. Nothing pretty about that. Just an effective maneuver by Escobar. Mysterio survives, but definitely some damage done off that whiplash. Here comes Santos dropping the leg on Ray. The Cruiserweight Champion is now underneath the control of Santos Escobar. Mysterio trying to shake the cobwebs off. Escobar missed that kick. Wait a minute, Escobar going for a powerbomb position. Mysterio flips out with it. Frankensteiner, stack up. What was a West Coast pop variation? Not a maneuver we see at a rave very often anymore, but definitely a variation inside the squared circle. Beautiful counter by Ray. May not have gotten the victory, but certainly got the momentum back on his side. Oh, look at this. Mysterio scaling the ropes. Drop kicked Escobar. These two Lucha Libre legends leaving it all inside the squared circle tonight. Rey Mysterio not looking to leave without the gold he walked in with. The Cruiserweight Championship that he has held loud and proud since January the 1st at the Royal Rumble. Bulldog. Now right into the cover on Santos Escobar. Will that do it? Not just yet as Escobar kicks out again. Rey Mysterio thought he had the challenger there. That was a beautiful maneuver on the ropes. Meant Santos Escobar with that missile drop kick and the springboard bulldog, but still not a combination. That was able to keep down the man they call the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar. Nice counter by Escobar off that kick. Wait a minute, Santos may have caught Rey! Phantom Driver, dead center of the ring! Mysterio kicks out! Escobar throwing his best shot! at the Cruiserweight Champion, but Rey Mysterio has seen worst. <laughs> Vancouver, Canada loving the performance by these two luchadors, and Escobar is not done. Rey kicks out of the Phantom Driver, but now Santos has got him. Fireman's carry position on the middle buckle. Oh, it drops Rey Mysterio. Rib cage first on the top rope. The win's gotta be knocked out of the champion. Phantom Driver number two. Escobar, no waste in motion, into the cover. And Santos Escobar has become a three-time WWE Cruiserweight Champion of the World. That was one hell of a contest to kick things off here from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. WWE Vengeance, Rey Mysterio gave it all he had, but Escobar had the blueprint to dethrone the Cruiserweight Champion here tonight. Here is your winner, and the new WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Santos Escobar. The Blue Brands Cruiserweight division now has a new here to the throne. The Emperor of Lucha Libre, the leader of Legado del Fantasma. He may have a smug attitude, but he's got what it takes from bell to bell. And Santos Escobar is leaving Vancouver, a three-time WWE Cruiserweight Champion of the World. What a matchup to kick things off. Much more to come here tonight in Vancouver at WWE Vengeance.
Well, we are set for a all-star six-man tag team matchup from Monday Night Raw. I would lock in because I got a feeling this is going to be a good one with some personal struggles to be settled. The man who kicked off this whole issue, the visionary of WWE, Seth freaking Rollins. That is the man that the Celtic warrior Sheamus is looking to settle the score with in the midst of this six-man tag team matchup here tonight in Vancouver at Vengeance. is a six-man tag team match. Introducing first from Davenport, Iowa, weighing in at 217 pounds, Seth Freakin' Rollins. It was over a month ago on Monday Night Raw when Sheamus defeated Seth Rollins in a backlash qualifying matchup. Of course, for the matchup that was to determine the number one contender for the WWE Championship here tonight. Ever since then, Seth Rollins has been ticked off on the red brand, took his actions out, or I should say took his anger out through the actions of ambushing Sheamus after a matchup Sheamus had against Karrion Cross on Monday Night Raw in the backstage area. Of course, Sheamus has been aligning himself with his newest protege, Ridge Holland, and of course, the man formerly known as Butch, now known the Bruiserweight, or I should say the formerly known as Pete Dunne, if we can get it out tonight, now known as Butch, aligning themselves as the brawling brutes. Sheamus has got his warriors. He challenged Seth Rollins to bring his own, and Seth Rollins went to the cold and unusual, dark and dangerous, Prince Finn Balor and Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest. And at a combined weight of 439 pounds, Damian Priest and Finn Balor, the Judgment Day. These are two men who came together a few months back on Monday Night Raw, and they've really been dominant on the red brand ever since. They each own a victory over Montez Ford of the Street Profits, also a tag team victory about a month ago on the red brand. And most importantly, when it comes to building momentum tonight at Vengeance, remember just this past Monday night on Raw, the Bruiserweight Butch returning to action for the first time since WrestleMania and was unfortunately upset by the Prince Finn Balor. You gotta believe the momentum is on the side of Seth Rollins and his two chosen warriors tonight as these three men enter the battlefield with three brawling brutes, three pissed off Irishmen, Sheamus, Ridge Holland, and of course the man from the UK, Butch. This is gonna be one hell of a six man tag team matchup as we dumped it, a all star lineup from Monday Night Raw with a whole lot of scores to be settled. And if I'm looking at the calendar correctly here, Sunday night, May 14th, I believe it says, Fight Night in Vancouver! Oh yeah, the Celtic Warrior Sheamus is back, and he's got his brawling brutes in tow. Combined weight of 725 pounds. Butch, Ridge Holland, and the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, the Brawling Brutes. Ridge Holland has been by the side of Sheamus for about two months on Monday Night Raw. We saw Butch back in action this past week with Ridge Holland in his corner. But this is the first time that Sheamus, Butch, and Holland have been in tow in their entirety. The Brawling Brutes, certainly a formidable unit. And if I'm Seth Rollins on the Judgment Day, I gotta feel a little, little bit intimidated knowing these three warriors are standing across the ring. Butch, a former two-time Intercontinental Champion within the last year. Sheamus has had a decorated WWE career. Sheamus taking Ridge Holland under his wing. You know he's not gonna do that for anybody. And you know he's teaching Ridge the fridge. All the tools will get it done inside of the ring. But tonight is the first night in action for the Brawling Brutes in their entirety. Let's see what this trio is made of. We know how dangerous the visionary of WWE Seth Rollins could be. Former World Heavyweight Champion on SmackDown. And ever since getting drafted to Raw, he has taken up this issue himself with Sheamus. And now, the Brawling Brutes. And a little bit of tag team action out of Butch and his new partner, Ridge the Fridge Holland. Oh man, look at the strength! Sheamus a heavyweight in his own right, but Ridge Holland, my goodness. He has got the strength to throw anybody around inside the squared circle. 
You remember a few weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, the night Butch made his return. Earlier that evening, Ridge Holland went one-on-one -on -one with Seth Rollins, trying to do one good by the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. He may have came up short, but Ridge Holland certainly took the visionary to his limit. Rollins smart to try to throw Ridge off his game. Tag in the Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest. Oh, wait a minute, Ridge going for the roll up here, winning by any means necessary. Rolling Brutes looking to just stick it to Seth Rollins and the two men he has chose to stand by his side here tonight at Vengeance. And look at Priest here, able to muscle up the big man. Neck breaker variation on the name. As we mentioned, ever since Damian Priest and Finn Balor have came together, forming the Judgment Day, of course, alongside Rhea Ripley, they have been a dominant trio in their own ways on Monday Night Raw. Balor and Priest have not seen defeat. And of course, Rhea Ripley's been doing her own thing, tearing things up in the women's division. Prince Finn Balor in, taking the fight to Ridge Holland right now. And I'm sure this is what the Judgment Day and Seth Rollins would love to do. Pick apart the protege of Sheamus, Ridge Holland, the least experienced competitor in this matchup, while Butch and Sheamus stand on the outside, watch them pick him apart, and watch this matchup and their hopes of winning it go up in smoke. But there's a counter by Ridge. Looked like Damian might have been going for that razor's edge there. And Ridge Holland trying to get back into this, but Priest having none of it. You know, it's very interesting, the Brawling Brutes, as Damian Priest goes for the cover on Ridge, but he is in Brawling Brutes territory. No way that was going to happen. Oh, wait a minute here. Sheamus and Seth Rollins trying to go at it. Damian Priest saving the day for the Visionary, however. Oh, wait a minute. Priest, Priest knocking Sheamus off the apron. Not even the legal man. But you know the Archer of Infamy, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins don't give a damn. Finn Balor tagged in and sending Ridge right back over the top rope. Oh, wait a minute. Now Balor taking Butch off the apron. Rolling Brutes getting all kinds of split apart now as Balor drops Sheamus with the DDT on the outside. Oh, wait a minute. Ridge Holland back inside the ring. All's fair in love and war as Balor's focusing on the illegal competitor. So is Ridge the Fridge. Look at this. Ten beats of the Baldrin. At a Ridge. Damian Priest goes down. Anarchy in this six-man tag team matchup. Referees got to try to gain some control, but Ridge Holland getting caught off guard. The Prince comes from behind, looking for the victory. Early on in this matchup, but Butch in there to break things up. This is where the matchup is going to continue to break down if the referee doesn't step in as Seth Rollins took care of Butch, but that allows Ridge Holland to take care of Finn Bauer. Look at the strength out of Ridge here. Ridge Holland, win, lose, or draw is certainly going to impress some eyes tonight. Already took a page out of his mentor Seamus' book off that 10 beats to Damian Priest. And now a tag made. Celtic Warrior finally legal and going after the Prince Finn Balor. Whoops, Balor off. Tilt to whirl back breaker. And Seamus. Oh, look at this. Sheamus is standing back. Sheamus is allowing Balor to tag in Rollins. He wants a hand on the visionary. The man who started this whole issue when Rollins ambushed Sheamus in the backstage area, suplexing him through a table to the concrete, allowing Sheamus to miss the last three weeks of action on Monday Night Raw. Sheamus has been waiting for this ever since that night. Sits out, not getting the victory just yet. But you know the Celtic Warrior is going to continue to come out swinging in this contest. Sheamus has been waiting for this for weeks on Monday Night Raw. And as a matter of fact, I'm sure Seth Rollins has too. As we mentioned, this whole issue started by Sheamus defeating Rollins in that qualifying matchup. For Seth Rollins tonight, this is almost a chance to right that wrong in his mind, prove that he's the better man over Sheamus, and get back on the right path on Raw. All remains to be seen. A score to be settled and possible opportunities to come from this six-man tag team matchup, but they got to get the job done. It's all about who gets their hand raised and who goes home with their head held high and who's got their head hanging low in shame and losing. Wait a minute, Sheamus roll up on Damian Priest. Looking for the victory, not just yet. Wait a minute, now Priest... Sheamus went for the right hand. Priest able to counter. He's got the big man up. The veteran of the Brutes. Razor's edge on Sheamus. 
and into the cover. But a poor choice by Damian Priest, if I say so myself, as he was in brawling Brute's territory, but Seth Rollins trying to knock out Butch with that knee. Chaos erupting, now Sheamus going after Rollins, and Sheamus gonna take care of the visionary. Oh, wait a minute, Sheamus turns around, Damian Priest, south of heaven, on the Celtic Warrior. And I got a feeling that's gonna do it. Into the cover, Rich Holland. Well, Rich tried to break it up, and I believe he did, but Sheamus also reaching out and getting the hand on the ropes. Nice save there by Sheamus. The Priest could be going for a second south of heaven. Sheamus able to avoid it, but Damian sends Sheamus into the corner, goes for a looks at possibly that back elbow of sorts. Sheamus got out of the way, but Priest is all over the Celtic Warrior here. What a match this has been thus far. These six All-Stars on Monday Night Raw throwing all they got at each other. Damian Priest and Finn Balor chose to stand by Seth Rollins tonight. I'm sure they're looking for some possible tag team championship opportunities out of a victory tonight. They're going to give this match just as much as Sheamus and the Brutes are. Sheamus sending Priest into the corner. Look at this. Tag made to Butch. And I still can't believe we are seeing these two men who were bitter rivals last year now standing side by side. Look at this double team out of Sheamus and Butch. Into the cover. Priest in there, or able to break it up. Balor in there. Ridge the fridge trying to take care of Finn. But the Bruiserweight is back in action. Former two-time Intercontinental Champion, former NXT United Kingdom Champion, NXT Tag Team Champion. The Bruiserweight is carving a new path on Monday Night Raw with new buddies by his side. And it starts here tonight at Vengeance. Damian Priest better watch, he is in enemy territory. And he is in there with a dangerous SOB in the butch, Pete Dunne. Oh, and an Insiguri. Oh, wait a minute. I believe Seth Rollins made the blind tag there. Butch didn't see it. Rollins has taken complete control over the bruiser weight. Nobody is going to outsmart the visionary. Made that blind tag. Butch never saw it. You see, in a snap of the fingers, the momentum shifts to the opposite corner of the ring. James again, or excuse me, Seth Rollins again takes down Pete Dunn. Excuse me, Butch, we're gonna have to get used to that around here. Butch donning a new name, a part of the Brawling Brutes. The Bruiserweight is down and out nonetheless. As Seth Rollins trying to wear down Butch right now. Look at this, reverse, my goodness. Face first on the canvas he goes. Tag made to the Prince, tag made to Ridge Holland. Ridge the fridge, trying to come out swinging here, and then he does. Mean uppercut. Ridge is looking good tonight, man. The protege of Sheamus. Sheamus certainly chose some good company to join him in this new faction of the Brawling Brutes. Finn Balor, no one to play games with inside of the ring. Taking out Ridge, whips him off into the enemy territory. Down he goes off the double stomp. Almost an in-ring variation of the coup de gras. Balor hits so perfectly from the top rope. Balor hits that in this matchup, and he could be seeing himself, Damian Priest, and Seth Rollins leaving Vancouver, Canada tonight with the victory. Now a tag made by Seth Rollins. Balor and Rollins, who have seen their differences in the past, now working together in the midst of this six-man tag. And wait a minute, off the double team, Rollins has got his eyes locked on Ridge. Down goes Holland in the middle of the ring. Into the cover. And Sheamus not even going to allow a one count there. The Brawling Brutes are going to keep swinging for the fences, looking for the home run. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Seth. Curb stomp on Ridge Holland. And I think that's going to do it. Into the cover on Ridge, but there's Butch to break things up now. They took care of Sheamus. Forgot about the bruiser weight. Rollins hit the curb stomp. But unfortunately for him, the Bruiserweight was right there to make sure this matchup rolls on. And now Ridge off the schoolboy on Seth. Referee a little out of position. Now is in there and Rollins gets the shoulder up. Things are breaking down in this six-man tag team matchup. Sheamus going after Priest. Every man swinging for the fences. This is what we expected in this six-man tag team match. This is what we expected all night long. 
and quite possibly the most anticipated live premiere event not only of the season but on the Noah Nation Gaming YouTube channel thus far. Sheamus now tagged in the uppercut to Seth Rollins. And now the Celtic Warrior, look at this, has got vision, the visionary on his shoulders going for white noise on Rollins. Into the cover he goes. But Damian Priest and Finn Balor are still standing, so, still aware of their surroundings and are going to make sure they're not losing this contest tonight. Sheamus trying to take care of Priest, but I think the brawling brutes or even vice versa. These teams, these trios are going to have to work in unison to take out the others and keep an opponent down for a three count tonight. Too many bodies to keep your eyes on at once. Everybody's going to have to have each other's back and take out the opposing team in search for victory. Great power bomb sits out with it by Sheamus. Rollins left with no choice but to head to the ropes to try to just get to his own two feet. And meanwhile, Sheamus, we saw this out of Ridge the Fridge earlier. Thought he could have been going for 10 beats there, but Damian Priest making sure that that wasn't going to happen and Rollins off the Instaguri. Tag made to Finn Balor. Sheamus crawling to his corner. There's the tag made to Butch. Balor and Butch now back in the ring. And remember what we said about this past Monday Night on Raw. Balor with that victory over the Bruiserweight. And now Butch looking to not only right that wrong for Monday Night, but looking to win this one for the Brawling Brutes as he gets sent off the top by the Prince Finn Balor. This is what live premiere events are all about. The action, the chaos that we are witnessing in this six-man tag team matchup. Damian Priest, face first off the canvas, goes Butch. Balor tagged in Priest, Priest tags in Rollins, and I think Rollins may be looking for the kill right now. Butch has got no idea where he's at, and there's a curb stomp. First we saw one to Ridge, now to Butch, into the cover. The Ridge, the fridge is still standing, and he's gonna break it up this time. Ridge and Butch having each other's backs in this matchup. They are making a great team in their own right. Then add in Shame, and she got one hell of a trio. Rollins thought he had Butch there. He thought he had Ridge a few moments ago. Sheamus has yet to eat the curb stomp. Rollins is looking to make it a hat trick tonight. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Down goes Rollins. Bitter end into the cover, and Damian Priest not even going to allow the one count. Sheamus takes care of Priest. And everybody, this is like our greatest hits so far tonight here in this matchup. As Rollins takes down Butch again. Face first. That's a way to break your nose if I ever saw one. We've got chaos on the outside of the ring right now. Meanwhile, Rollins taking out Butch with that forearm to the back of the head. Ridge, Sheamus, Balor, and Priest are all going at it. Off camera right now. Meanwhile, Rollins off the frog splash. Ridge back in there. Balor back in. Rollins looking to take care of Ridge Holland, who's not even the legal man at the moment. Oh my goodness, wait a minute. Holy hell! Did you see the curb stomp off the middle buckle? by Seth Rollins to Ridge Holland, who is not even the legal man, but if he was, his daylights would be knocked out for good, and Balor's looking to take care of him off the coup de gras. Luckily, Ridge gets out of the way. This action is damn near too much to keep up with right now. This is what Monday Night Raw, and this is what live premiere is all about. Ridge going after Finn, Butch going after Rollins, Get a load of the bruiser way who takes out Seth. Foot on the gas pedal all the way down in this six man tag. And Butch and Finn Balor, the legal men, back inside the ring, the center focus on them, at least for now. But what a crazy matchup this has been. Balor takes out Butch again, and now Finn heading to the top rope. Oh no, coup de gras on Butch. And I think that's gonna do it. And I think it would have had Ridge Holland not still been standing. But that young man is willing to put his body on the line on behalf of the brawling brutes. Ridge takes care of Priest. Balor takes care of Holland. And we are still fighting in this six man tag team warfare.
Rolling Brutes, their first night in action all together. Not looking to go down in defeat. Priest, Balor, and Rollins. Unfortunately for the Rolling Brutes, got the same idea. Tag made to Seth. Tag made to Sheamus. Here we go again with the men who started this whole issue. Oh, wait a minute. Sheamus looking for 10 beats. Oh, we almost got it on Finn Balor. Seth Rollins broke things up. Bro kick. Bro kick by Sheamus. Rollins is out. And now Sheamus taking one on Balor, taking one on Rollins. Looks a little rocky on the top rope. And Sheamus losing his balance there. Having to keep his eye on the judgment day. And it may have just cost him as he accidentally knocks down the referee. My God, the action to keep up with from bell to bell in this matchup is absolutely unheard of. Sheamus might have had Rollins there had it not been for the misstep. He took out Seth Rollins with the bro kick, then had to keep his eye on Balor and Priest, knocked them both off the top, unfortunately caused him to lose his balance, and he knocked out the damn referee. Finn Balor back in here right now as this six-man tag rolls on. Rogers Arena, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada is loving the Monday Night Raw action at play as Finn is looking to turn Sheamus off for good. What did we say earlier? This is damn near our greatest, hit, greatest hits of these six men in this matchup. Butch breaking up the pinfall there. Oh, wait a minute. Now Balor to the top. Coup de Gras again on Sheamus. And Ridge breaks it up. These men are gonna have to be knocked out cold with shackles around their ankles to be sure they don't get to their own two feet to ensure this matchup comes to a close. Bro kick on Finn. But then Seth Rollins is right there. Ridge Holland trying to take care of Seth. Sheamus taking care of Priest. There and down goes the Archer of Infamy. Sheamus has got his eyes on the Priest, or excuse me, on the Prince Finn Balor hangs him up on the top rope. As this may be the Celtic Warriors chance to finally bring this matchup to a close. Ridge has got his eyes on Seth Rollins. Damian Priest is down. Bro kick numero dos on Finn. That'll do it. Seth Rollins was a half a second late and after absolutely hellacious warfare, the brawling brutes win this brawl around Vancouver. Leave it in victory tonight after damn near one of the most chaotic and certainly action packed six man tag team matches we have ever seen. Here are your winners, Butch and Ridge Holland. An awesome six man tag team matchup tonight. Ridge the Fridge, the Bruiser Way Butch, and the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. The Brawling Brutes win it here at Vengeance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next on behalf of SmackDown, you want to talk about scores to be settled? Look no farther. The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, All Day Austin Theory, 30 minutes on the clock. Who is going to be the WWE's Iron Man? To be the man means you have to defeat the best. There may be no two men better from bell to bell on Friday Night SmackDown than Austin Theory and Cody Rhodes. When Austin Theory was searching for his road to WrestleMania, he called out a returning American Nightmare for a face-off at the show of shows. Although Theory held the WWE Championship last year, he was in an underdog position as Cody Rhodes had all the adrenaline in his soul to come out victorious in his grand return. However, that was only a fever dream as the young stud from A-Town shocked the world once again silencing millions all around the globe as he pinned Cody's shoulders down for a three count. As Theory walked tall after his win on the grandest stage, Cody Rhodes' mental struggle with moving past that defeat was only getting harder. As the opportunity presented itself, Cody challenged Theory to run things back in Minneapolis at Backlash. Although Theory had already defeated Cody, he looked at this match as a chance to raise his stock on SmackDown and become a future top contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. Theory's plan did not go as he would have liked, 
as the American Nightmare righted the wrong of WrestleMania and found a way to defeat the former WWE Champion. With this series now evened up, Austin Theory seek to gain the upper hand and finally leave Cody behind at the crossroads. He ambushed Cody after a competitive battle on SmackDown, but was Theory's attempt to rid himself of Cody the ingredient that added fuel to this fire? Bragging rights and opportunity have pushed these two superstars through not one, but two battles, and with neither man truly gaining the edge, it's time to settle the score once and for all. 30 minutes on the clock, no count outs, no disqualifications, and as many decisions as it takes until the final bell sounds. Who will be the Iron Man of War? Who will dig down deep and prove themselves to be amongst the best in the world? These are the nights where legends are born, and for Theory and Rhodes, tonight is the night to prove yourself better than your adversary. As the clock starts to tick, the search for the Iron Man of WWE begins. Big fight feel here in the Rogers Arena on behalf of Friday Night SmackDown as it is time for the 30 minute Iron Man grudge match between Theory and Rhodes. The following contest is an Iron Man match. Making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. It was the middle of last year when Austin Theory became the WWE Champion. He held it for just over a month until losing it to Edge back in September at Judgment Day. Ever since then, Austin Theory has been climbing back to the top of the ladder, trying to achieve main event status all over again. And Austin Theory was looking for his road to WrestleMania. He met a returning American nightmare, Cody Rhodes, who has shifted the focus of the all-day superstar ever since. Austin Theory got the victory at WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes got the victory in the rematch in Minneapolis at Backlash. But who walks away? The Iron Man of WWE. Tonight in Vancouver. Austin Theory has entered the ring and the adversary makes his way down the aisle for one of the biggest matches of both men's career. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes is looking to finish the story with Austin Theory tonight. Will Cody get the job done? Or will the former WWE Champion continue on his path of glory to the main event scene with an Iron Man victory over the American Nightmare? And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds. The Cody Rhodes is looking to finish the story as we mentioned with Austin Theory tonight. This situation with Theory has really changed the trajectory of Cody Rhodes' return to WWE. And it started with that loss at WrestleMania. And when Cody thought he righted that wrong at Backlash, Austin Theory could not live with that loss and came back for more. This is simply one of those stories that you see throughout the years where it's two big egos, two very talented competitors looking to see who is the better man between the two. Cody Rhodes, obviously the veteran of this experience, the veteran of this matchup, but Austin Theory, like him or not, has proved his worth, especially over the last year. 30 minute Iron Man matchup. All day Austin Theory, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, here we go in Vancouver. Pinfall and submission, the only way to gain a victory. Wait a minute, Cody going for the schoolboy. Early pinfall, not just yet. There are no count outs and no disqualifications in this matchup. As you see, the timer at the top of your screen right there. These two men are going to go to war until that clock strikes zero. 
It's been a long time since we've seen an Iron Man match here in WWE. And that is because of the, really the measure that it takes on your body. You really need the intestinal fortitude, the will to fight, the will to succeed, to outlast one of these matches. And to be able to go the distance, especially with the likes of these two competitors, as Austin Theory, you see, going for that knee lock right there. Uncharacteristic maneuver out of the arsenal of Theory, but I'm sure both of these men have looked to add to the add to said arsenals and really change up the blueprint in preparation for this matchup tonight. Almost similar to what we talked about with Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio earlier. I'm sure these two men have watched back the footage from WrestleMania and Backlash and are looking to throw each other off their games and especially pull out some new tricks of the trade with 30 minutes and a lot of time to fight and get those pinfalls. This matchup spills to the outside again. No count outs, no disqualifications in this 30 minute Iron Man matchup. Pinfalls and submissions can happen at any time. Whoever has the most by the time the clock strikes zero will be determined your victor tonight. This is certainly a matchup that could aid in number one contendership on SmackDown for possibly the United States Championship or even the World Heavyweight Championship. Both of those titles still to be defended tonight here in Vancouver at Vengeance. Man, what a night it's been already to the Cruiserweight Championship matchup. Santos Escobar, your new champion, defeating Rey Mysterio. What about that six-man tag from Monday Night Raw moments ago? Crash and burn by Cody Rhodes as Austin Theory was able to get out of the way. And now Theory suplex on the outside of the ring. Theory better keep his eye on the American Nightmare, however, because Cody going right after Theory sent him into the barricade. Speaking of that six-man tag moments ago where it really felt like all six men just had their foot on the gas pedal all the way down and going 100 miles a minute throughout that six-man tag, I expect a little bit of a different showcase here. 30 minutes on the clock, a lot of time to get those victories throughout this matchup. Cody Rhodes and Austin Theory going to have to make sure they don't spread themselves thin and wear themselves out in the early going. Cody sending Theory back into the ring. you got to wonder... If Cody's looking to keep, that's the second time Cody has sent Theory back in the ring. You gotta wonder if he's trying to keep things inside the squared circle and avoid the outskirts. He's trying to avoid any further damage. Remember Austin Theory ambushing Cody Rhodes on Friday Night SmackDown, sending him into the steel steps is really the catalyst to this third matchup tonight here at Vengeance. Really up the ante of this rivalry, really create a little bad blood between Theory and Cody when it was originally almost just a matchup of who's the better man. And I still think that is the underlining story here, but at the end of the day, there can only be one. And Cody Rhodes dropping Theory. Classic maneuver out of the Rhodes family playbook. Now Cody pick up Theory with a suplex, drops him of his own. It should be very interesting to see also throughout this matchup who's going to go for their. Really big time finishing maneuvers earlier. Cody Rhodes, of course, that vertebraker, the crossroads, Austin Theory with the blockbuster, the A-Town down. Really don't want to pull out those moves too early, especially with the chance that you haven't done enough damage to your opponent and they can hit the kick out. One kick out of one of those big time finishing maneuvers is really build the confidence of your opposer and maybe not make them as effective later on in the matchup. More remains to be seen as this Matchup progresses. Only a few minutes in so far, still 25 and change on the clock. We've got a long way to go here at the Rogers Arena. As Cody and Theory continue on, we want to thank you again for joining us so far for this live premiere event. Nobody does Universe Mode quite like us on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. It's only getting bigger and better, and so far this has been one hell of a vengeance event. So thank you again for joining us live. We want to remind you to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button as well, and if you want bonus universe mode episodes each and every month hit that join button become a channel member and you will get that bonus content each and every month Cody Rhodes taking down theory off the disaster kick and again you see the pace a little bit slower so far not trying to wear themselves out with 25 minutes still on the clock on goes theory Cody with those elbows to the back Cody, there's a clothesline, stiff clothesline by the former WWE Champion. And as we mentioned earlier, Austin Theory has really proved his worth throughout the last year in WWE. A short reign of the WWE Championship, but at the end of the day, still held the gold. 
Had a series of matches with John Cena, similar to this series of matches with Cody Rhodes. Here is a participant, of course, in the Royal Rumble matchup. At one time earlier this year, challenged Matt Riddle for his WrestleMania main event. I think that speaks volumes on how desperate Austin Theory was to compete in a high-profile match at the grandest stage of them all. Which, again, has inevitably led him to Cody Rhodes and has now led him to this multiple rump rivalry between the two men. Cody Rhodes, that bionic elbow, taking a page out of the American Dream, baby. Unfortunately, misses for that elbow in the corner. Now Austin Theory going to take control. Backbreaker on the American Nightmare. The kid from A-Town continuing the offense. Nice elbow drop on Cody. We've seen a couple of them so far. But the playbook of Austin Theory be to take out the lower back of Cody. Take out the back. That's really going to take out a lot of power moves, a lot of even springboard moves out of the arsenal of Cody Rhodes. Could be a smart play by Austin Theory. Cody down and out again. And Austin Theory going for a power bomb. it looks like. Down goes Cody. And that matchup, or excuse me, that maneuver is certainly going to do some damage. And just ragdolling Cody down. And Theory, smart to go into the cover off that series of maneuvers. And Cody gets the shoulder up. Theory starting to gain some momentum, starting to build some in this match. Really starting to rake up some of that damage on the American Nightmare. And as we mentioned a few times already, pinfall and submission, the only ways to get a decision throughout this match. No countouts, no disqualifications. Whoever has the most decisions by the time the time expires will be declared the victor. A little bit of sense of urgency out of Cody Rhodes, not looking to fall behind in the race to the finish line. Overhand chop on Theory, making a dose. There's a clothesline. Eye for an eye. Olsen Theory hit it with a clothesline a few minutes ago. Cody's got one in his playbook as well. Nice headlock takeover by the American Nightmares. Olsen Theory is now in a predicament. Here comes Cody. Springboard. Moonsault into the cover for the first decision of this match. Will that do it? Theory gets the shoulder up. And it could be the only decision of this match. Whoever gets their pin, or excuse me, whoever gets their shoulders pinned to the mat for a three count or taps out to a submission hold first could easily be the only decision in this match. It really puts the other at a disadvantage because then not only do you have to try to tie it up, then you got to try to defeat your opponent again to ultimately win the matchup, which is what makes Iron Man matches so inter interesting. That advantage that could come. Oh, wait a minute. Austin Theory goes low, a low blow on Cody Rhodes, and Cody's barely able to kick out. But Austin Theory using the rules of this matchup to fullest advantage. Theory does not give a damn how he scores a decision tonight. Directly in the eyes of the referee, but there's not a thing the referee can do, as there is no disqualifications in this Iron Man match. That low blow almost awarded Austin Theory the first decision of this match. 21 minutes and some change on the clock, and Cody Rhodes taking a spill to the outside. Theory on the chase, on the American Nightmare right now, and Cody has got to be feeling it off that low blow, especially in the midsection in the gut area, as Austin Theory continues the offense on Cody on the outside. Back inside the ring he goes, and wait a minute, Theory's looking under the ring, and he's breaking out a table in Vancouver. Austin Theory's looking to take some hardware to this matchup. And Cody Rhodes just felt it a little bit off of that clothesline. And God only knows what Austin Theory has been boiling it up in that mind of his in the preparation for this 30-minute Iron Man match. Austin Theory breaking out the table. No countouts, no DQs. Theory looking to use the rules to his fullest advantage as we have seen so far. Cody having to use the ropes to get to his feet there, and Theory just sends him for a ride over the top rope. Cody Rhodes is in a predicament right now, but Austin Theory with a misstep, and Cody Rhodes has a sign of life. Went for the crossbody, nobody home, and 20 minutes into this matchup, Cody Rhodes is seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, at least for now. Sends Theory into the barricade. Cody Rhodes had him back inside the ring, could be looking for a breather, and, or could be looking to use that table that Austin Theory introduced. Oh, wait a minute. Cody putting the table on the outside of the ring. I'm not sure of the strategy here, but maybe Cody doesn't want none. 
of the wood of the table. Maybe Cody's looking to keep this a straight up wrestling matchup. Oh, well, or, or not. Cody Rhodes, now he's got the table in hand. The American Nightmare's got something cooking, and again, Austin Theory went for that crossbody. Cody Rhodes, however, able to got that table almost to flex it and now uses it as a weapon before he even sets it up, and there it goes. Cody Rhodes has got something in that brain of his. He's looking to use that table of theory introduced to the disadvantage of the young all-day superstar. A bulldog in the outside to theory. Cody has not done yet. Cody is now looking under the ring. And Cody has grabbed a second table. And Theory trying to avoid it. I do not know what Cody Rhodes has got in mind. Oh, wait a minute. Theory off the German suplex, and I believe we caught a glimpse. I think Theory has been busted wide open off that bulldog on the outside of the ring. If that is the case, we got to get a second look. But if that is the case, that is not going to go well for Austin Theory, especially when this matchup really starts to enter the deep waters. The blood is going to tire you out more than anything. And Austin Theory, yeah, he has been busted open. I don't know if it's just on the forehead or right above the eye, but he is seeing some color in Vancouver. That is not going well for Theory, but Cody Rhodes, all fair and love and war in this matchup, looking to open up the wound of Theory just a little bit more. Cody directing his sights to that table once again. I don't know what Cody's got in mind. But clearly, Cody Rhodes took a trip to the hardware store before he made the trip to the north. He's got a second table. As Theory's chasing after him, and Cody just makes Theory run right into the wood. Cody's setting up another table at ringside. I don't know what the American Nightmare has got in mind. He's heading to the top row. Theory on the chase, and Cody Rhodes drops the hammer. Now Cody Rhodes has really taken advantage of this matchup ever since that Bulldog and ever since Austin Theory has been busted wide open in the midst of this Iron Man affair. Cody heading back to the outside. Cody looking back under the apron and Cody has pulled a third table out from underneath the ring here. What the hell does Cody have in mind right now? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Austin Theory, a crossroads on Cody. We saw that at Backlash. He did it again. And it's not enough to keep Cody down. Austin Theory thought he caught Cody with a quick victory. But not just yet. Vancouver, British Columbia, loving the offense out of these two competitors. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Cody's been busted wide open as well. His head must have hit in a particular position off that crossroads. And now both of these men are sporting a crimson mask. This is not going to, going to go well for either competitor. At least you could call it an even playing field, I guess. But at the end of the day, with the blood trickling from the forehead, that is only going to make the endurance that much harder in this matchup. Iron Man match is certainly all about playing the long game and lasting till the end. And Cody Rhodes, in theory, now got a target on each of their foreheads and above their eyes, whatever it is. That is certainly not going to go well. Now, Theory giving Cody a little taste of his own medicine off that closed fist to the open wound. Tides of this matchup certainly shifting as Cody Rhodes was trying to set something up on the outside with multiple tables. Austin Theory caught him with that crossroads. And it has turned the tides of the momentum in this match. Down goes Cody, not even able to hold on to the top rope off that shot. Wait a minute, Cody not done. Suplex on the outside of the ring. Release suplex. Theory goes back first. You're keeping your eye on the clock. We got just over 15 minutes left. Almost halfway through this Iron Man match so far. Rushing light sweep into that barricade. Austin Theory is going to feel that one in the morning. And Cody's got his eyes set on those tables he was trying to set up again. I have no idea what Cody is cooking up right now. But it is certainly not going to do Austin Theory any good if Cody gets his way. There's one table unused, two tables set up, and Cody is back underneath the apron, and Cody has pulled out another table. Cody Rhodes, did he have a conversation with the Dudley boys before he came to the north? 
There are three tables set up precariously at ringside as Cody makes his way back inside the square circle and has got his eyes on Austin Theory. Cody on the top rope. Wait a minute. Theory! Fall away slam to the American Nightmare. Theory better keep his eye on the game here. Cody Rhodes is going to get back into this in just a matter of moments if Austin Theory doesn't stay tuned into this contest. Here he goes for the drop toe hold. Could have been looking for that knee bar submission hold we saw out of him earlier in this matchup. Wait a minute, Cody heading to the outside. Remember, all three of those tables are at ringside. Wait a minute. Oh my God! Table explosion at ringside! Cody Rhodes suplex out of the ring to the floor through three tables. And the wood has exploded here at the Rogers Arena. Holy hell, what a maneuver. And Cody is not done as he comes flying off the apron. And has now turned his sights to that unused table on the other side of the ring. Cody Rhodes is desperate for victory tonight. And with 13 minutes left on the clock, not one decision yet. This is what the Iron Man matchup is all about. Who is the better man? We will find out right here tonight in Vancouver. There is wood. There is splinter all around ringside. And Austin Theory's trying to get back in as he's got Cody on his shoulders. Spins him out and slams him down at ringside. Austin Theory's got to be running off adrenaline right now, and you got to believe there's a sense of urgency in the all-day superstar as Cody Rhodes just went to the... deep deep down the bag of trip, tricks, if you will. Really pulled one out of the hat with that suplex to the outside, up the ante with not one, not two, but three tables. And both of those men really getting the worst of it. A theory on the outside of the ring and a DDT to an already bloodied Cody Rhodes. This matchup continues and this is exhausting to watch in the best way for us, but it's got to be exhausting to compete in the worst way for these two competitors. The end of the night, this is why we are having the Iron Man match though, to truly determine who is the better man between Cody Rhodes and Austin Theory. They've been going at it since WrestleMania Saturday in February. We saw the rematch last month at Backlash. We are getting the conclusion to this storied rivalry tonight here at Vengeance. Now it's Cody trying to get back into this matchup. Cody throwing a left. Excuse me, a right on Austin Theory. Sends him into the barricade again. These two men have certainly used the stipulation of no countouts and no disqualifications and factor those into their game plans tonight as Cody is back inside the ring and he is looking to utilize that second table. I should say that fourth table as three of them were just imploded at ringside a few minutes ago. Cody setting up that table, coming back inside the squared circle, Austin Theory on his tail and Cody throwing some shots at the all day superstar. Delivers the forearm in the corner. And what is the American Nightmare cooking up in that brain of his to try to keep Austin Theory down for a decision? Just over 10 minutes left in this matchup. Wait a minute, Theory, a town down on Cody Rhodes out of nowhere. Will that do it? Austin Theory has scored the first pinfall of this 30 minute Iron Man match. And just like that, Austin Theory goes up one to nothing. Advantage Austin Theory over the American Nightmare. And this is what we talked about earlier. That decision really changes the trajectory of this match. Cody now needs one decision to tie it and needs two to ultimately win it. Sense of urgency out of the American Nightmare who is repositioning that table inside of the ring as Austin Theory making his way over to Cody. Cody wants to use that table to his advantage. Might be Theory's worst enemy in this matchup. Theory avoids it. He's got his eyes on Cody Rhodes now. Goes for the knee. Cody counters. Back and forth we start to go. 
Closed fist, just trying to knock out Austin Theory. Cody Rhodes, any means necessary, right? Off the Irish whip. Takes Theory down to a knee. There's a counter. There's another shot to the rib cage. Make it three. Austin Theory with his eyes on Cody Rhodes. Wait a minute. Backbreaker through the table. Austin Theory using Cody Rhodes' table against him here. And Cody able to kick out to avoid a massive disadvantage. Could have been two to nothing there. But damage has ultimately been done that much more to Cody. If you're keeping your eye on the clock, we are under 10 minutes. We are under nine minutes. This matchup, the 30 minute Iron Man match has been a pleasure to watch. I'm sure it's been exhausting for these two competitors. Who is gonna be the better man? We will find out when the final bell tolls. Theory with the DDT. Cody was trying to get to his feet. Theory was having none of it. Nelson Theory's got his eyes on Cody. Cody is really in trouble right now. He cannot be in a position to go down two to nothing with only eight minutes left on the clock. Theory heading to the top as Cody is down and out. Big time splash, Cody gets out of the way. Cody needs a pinfall and he needs it now. Goes for the roll up there, but there's still rope breaks in this match and Theory was saved by the surroundings in this contest. Cody Rhodes has got to fight. He's got to have the adrenaline to keep moving forward. He's got to have the will to win if he wants this victory over Theory. On the top rope, Frankensteiner by Cody. Those are the maneuvers that Cody needs to pull out in order to succeed. Disaster kick. Cody going, going to the well with what works. And now wait a minute, could be going. Crossroads on Austin Theory to tie the score. Will that do it? It is one to one. Even playing field in the Iron Man match. Seven minutes, 24, 23, 22 seconds on the clock. And we are one to one in this match. Who is gonna win it all here? Cody went for that moonsault, nobody home. Austin Theory now, advantage, A-Town down. This has been one hell of a fight. Appreciation certainly being shown by Vancouver, Canada for these two Friday Night Smackdown superstars. Theory sending Cody out of the ring. Pinfalls and submissions can't take place on the outside, but we can certainly do a number of damage on the outskirts of the ring as we have seen all throughout this contest. Tables imploding, blood being spilled by both of these superstars. Who will be the last man standing when the clock expires? Theory just trying to wear down Cody on the outside. Cody knowing he's got to avoid it, especially right now, so deep in this contest. How much left do these two superstars got in the tank? Cody trying to get back into this, trying to wear down Theory. He needs pinfall number two. Same thing for Theory to ultimately win this matchup. One to one is just as good as zero to zero. You got to get the advantage over your opponent to ultimately win and be the Iron Man here in WWE. Nice clothesline by Cody, taking Theory off his feet. Off his feet, excuse me, sends him to the outside. Now Cody gonna send him for another ride to the outside. Cody Rhodes is fired up here. Austin Theory, dazed and confused and bloody as all hell, gets played out by Cody Rhodes off the suicide dive. The American Nightmare, fired up in Vancouver. And he may be smelling victory tonight. Certainly smells blood in the water and vice versa. Sending Theory back into the ring. Oh, wait a minute, Cody. Cody is going back under the apron with five minutes to go. He has pulled out our fifth, and yes, I said fifth, table of this match. Cody Rhodes knows he's, get, knows he's gotta go to a place he's never been before to try to defeat Theory. Theory just throwing haymakers, trying to get the advantage in this match, but Cody Rhodes trying to avoid it at all, any and all costs. 
Introducing yet another table. God only knows what the American Nightmare has got in mind right now for Austin Theory as he has set that table up yet again. Already seen that suplex to the outside of the ring crashing through three tables. We saw Austin Theory hit that backbreaker to the American Nightmare through that fourth table earlier. Now Cody. Oh no. Austin Theory in a precarious situation, lying across the wood of the table. The American Nightmare going to a place where he is certainly comfortable. Off the top rope and a frog splash. Austin Theory's rib cage has got to be screaming for mercy with four minutes left on the clock in this ultimate Iron Man match. Oh, and a kick by Theory. Theory still has life in him. Or is it just the adrenaline? Oh, drop toll hold. Quick pinfall by Theory. Oh, he almost had Cody there. Two and a half count. Theory almost had the advantage. It is one to one. Austin Theory hit the A town down, went up with the first pinfall. Cody evened it up off the crossroads. Who will ultimately win this matchup, or will anybody be able to score another decision with three minutes and 20 odd seconds left on the clock? Theory taking a move out of Cody Rhodes' book again right there with that spin out. Rope break saves Cody just like it saved Theory earlier. Cody rolling to the outside as if this matchup hasn't been all over already. Down goes Theory. Look at the carnage, not only at ringside, but inside the squared circle. There is tables, there is broken wood. This guy's definitely splinters all throughout these two men's body. Nonetheless, the blood that is coming out each of their foreheads right now. Cody wanted that ax hammer, nobody home. Austin Theory, power bomb. Oh, and you see Cody landed on the legs of that broken table. Two minutes, 30 odd seconds left on the clock. We need another decision to have a winner. This thing will go to a draw if that clock strikes zero. Theory on his feet, Cody springboard moonsault. Got a little bit, not all of it. And Austin Theory able to shake the cobwebs off. Muscle Cody up, snake eyes to an already bloody American nightmare. We are witnessing quite possibly the match of 2023 right now out of these two Friday Night Smackdown superstars leaving everything on the table for the shot of glory tonight. Cody now in the advantage. We're going to defeat Austin Theory. He needs that decision. So does Theory. We are under two minutes in this Iron Man match. There's nights like tonight where superstars are made. Both of these guys have an opportunity to become immortal here tonight in Vancouver. Nice scoop and a slam by the American Nightmares. Austin Theory is now in the corner, and Cody is not done dishing out the punishment, and he can't as there is a minute and 30 left on the clock here. Look at the strength. How does Cody still have it in him? to muscle Austin Theory up and a mega superplex on the cordage of the tables in the ring. What a freaking match we are witnessing here in Vancouver. Rogers Arena is on fire as Cody Rhodes is still not done swinging. We are under a minute, ladies and gentlemen. 29 minutes down, 53, 52, 51 seconds to go. Austin Theory has scored a pinfall. Cody Rhodes has scored a pinfall. We need one more to have a winner, but Cody Rhodes is not settled, dishing out offense to Theory, and he may have costed himself as there's a counter. And another counter. Oh, wait a minute. Crossroads. 30 seconds left. Cody into the cover. One, two. Cody Rhodes goes up two to nothing. 20 seconds remain. Cody Rhodes. Oh, wait a minute, he's got to keep Theory down. A crossroads number two with 13 seconds left on the clock. And after an amazing matchup, Cody Rhodes has dished out all he can and Austin Theory is too damn late. The bell has sounded and the American Nightmare is now gonna be known 
as Friday Night SmackDown's Ultimate Iron Man. Here is your winner, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Quite possibly the match of the year. The third matchup in this storied rivalry delivers an instant classic. Austin Theory thought he had him, but the American Nightmare went the distance, went two to nothing, or excuse me, two to one, and ultimately defeated all day Austin Theory, winning your 30 minute Iron Man here at Benjins. Do you want access to a bonus universe mode episode every single month? Well, now you have the chance. Click the join button down below and become a NOAA Nation Gaming channel member. Not only will you receive one bonus universe mode episode every single month, but you'll receive access to exclusive badges, emojis, discounted merchandise, and more. Become a premium pass channel member today and don't miss out on these exclusive perks. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE United States Championship. It has been a phenomenal night of action already. And speaking of phenomenal, the WWE United States Championship set to be defended here at Vengeance. The man who outlasted the United States Championship Eliminator throughout numerous weeks on SmackDown, AJ Styles. Certainly earning his opportunity tonight against the Ring General Gunther. First time ever meeting here tonight at Vengeance. Of course, in the midst of that United States Championship Eliminator, AJ Styles was able to outlast Jinder Mahal, Johnny Gargano, and Robert Roode in the finals. AJ Styles over the last couple of weeks has picked up a singles victory over Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser. And then alongside Wesley this past Friday night, those two men defeated Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci in tag team action. But no Wesley in the corner of Styles tonight. Styles is going it alone. He wants to win the United States Championship by himself. But it is a tall task ahead. The undefeated ring general, Gunther who has been dominating Friday Night SmackDown ever since Imperium was drafted to the blue brand back in November. And of course, won the United States gold in February at WrestleMania. This is gonna be AJ Styles' tough task to try to win the United States Championship tonight, and dare I say, Gunther's toughest task, not only in his United States Championship reign thus far, but in his SmackDown rules so far. Nonetheless, AJ Styles, the challenger is set. And Imperium is in Vancouver. Ludwig Kaiser, Giovanni Vinci, and the Ring General, and most importantly, the United States Champion, Guta. Guter, of course, winning the gold at WrestleMania, defeating the almighty Bobby Lashley. Already a successful championship defense under his belt. Last month at WWE Live for channel members only against Wesley. But certainly, as we mentioned, Guther's toughest, toughest task on the main roster so far. AJ Styles, a former WWE champion, former United States champion in his own right. Looking to do it all over again starting here tonight. It is not going to be an easy victory either way around this ring. But you got to believe that AJ Styles, regardless of the experience, is coming into this match the underdog against the undefeated ring general, Gunther, who is backed by Kaiser and Vinci here tonight in Vancouver. Kaiser and Vinci have been known to stick their nose in a little bit of business that it doesn't belong. We've seen that just the last few weeks on SmackDown. Hopefully this thing gets called right down the middle tonight, and hopefully Vinci and Kaiser don't sway the decision of this matchup. All remains to be seen, but it has already been an awesome night here at Vengeance. Hot off the heels of that 30-minute Iron Man match moments ago between Cody Rhodes and Austin Theory. But we are set to continue here tonight. Gunther defends the United States Championship against the phenomenal AJ Styles. The field is set. Championship is on the line. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger 
from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds, the phenomenal AJ Styles. And his opponent from Vienna, Austria, weighing in at 297 pounds, he is the WWE United States Champion, Here we go in Vancouver, Canada. Rogers Arena has been rocking all night long. And our second championship of five set to be decided right here tonight. Gunther handing over the United States Championship. And will he be handing over the gold for the very last time? AJ Styles taking an eye at the prize tonight. Gold he has held before. He's looking to do it all over again. Styles has been on a roll since getting drafted to Friday Night SmackDown back in March. Will that momentum continue through Vancouver and Vengeance tonight, or will the reign of Guther move past this evening? And Guther already doing what he does best, throwing the hardest shots, the hardest chops in the business, and taking down his challenger tonight. Guther's got his hands full, so does AJ Styles. As we already mentioned, this is not going to be an easy task. Either way, you swing it in this matchup. As long as Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser don't influence the decision that much, it is certainly going to be an earned victory for the United States gold tonight. Luther trying to take out his challenge early with a couple of hard strikes, but here comes AJ Styles. It was a phenomenal striker as well, no pun intended. Sending Guther to the corner. A nice takedown on the United States champion. Luther has turned away some of the up-and-coming best and absolutely some of the, of the best in WWE thus far. Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania retaining the gold over Wesley. He has ran over Friday Night SmackDown ever since November. But AJ Styles is certainly going to be a whole different challenge for Gunther to figure out tonight. Gunther, look at this, trying to manhandle the challenger here. Obviously the stronger of the two and definitely has the size advantage of this match. Gunther still has a lot of agility inside of that ring. Is able to move with the best of them. But AJ Styles certainly going to need to take things to the sky if he's got a chance in this matchup. And there he does just that. Forearm over the top rope. But he's in Imperium territory here. And Styles needs to keep his eye on the United States champion as well as his two cronies at ringside. Back inside the ring. Guther wasted no time. Unloading on Styles with some chops. A couple of kicks. And now unloading with those chops to the chest again. Guther is all over the phenomenal one early and now is looking for that rear naked choke. We have seen him win matches, retain his United States title in the past with this very submission hold here. And Styles could be fading early. And AJ knows that. Oh, wait a minute. Styles into a pinfall. Nice counter by Styles. Only a one count there. But a great way to get out of that submission hold by Styles. AJ going to have to get creative tonight just like that to figure out Gunther. There's a reason Gunther has been undefeated since November. Nobody has been able to keep down the ring general of WWE, but will AJ Styles be the one here tonight? You see, AJ's really just trying to get back into this, but every single time, Gunther is right there to cut off his momentum. Wait a minute, now Gunther could be going for the power bomb on AJ early, and down goes Styles. To retain the United States title, AJ gets the shoulder up. I think that may definitely be surprising Gunther right now. But the ring general's got to realize who he's in the ring with. The phenomenal one, AJ Styles. The face that runs the place on Friday Night SmackDown. What a maneuver to take down the champion. Gunther went to the well with one of his best maneuvers early. And it may have only lit a fire under the challenger tonight. As Styles heads to the top rope. And the champion is just trying to get his wits about him here. Crossbody! AJ's coming out swinging. A sense of urgency, if you will, out of the challenger after that rear naked choke, followed by the powerbomb just a few moments later. AJ Styles has fought long and hard to earn this opportunity tonight, and especially build momentum the last few weeks on SmackDown. Not looking to see it go up in smoke. One-on-one -on -one with the ring general. Gunther on the top here. Look at this, Styles. I think he was trying to go for an arm drag, but Gunther, as we mentioned earlier, the stronger these two competitors. 
Able to fend AJ Styles off and now Gunther, what a missile drop kick out of the United States champion. What a knocked AJ's lights at, at least not enough to keep him down for the three count, but AJ's egg's gotta be scrambled at the current moment. Wait a minute. Look at the strength by Styles this time. Off the neck breaker. And back and forth we start to go as we may have a new champion now. And this match has been awesome so far. Short matchup as we continue. But AJ Styles and Guth are all over each other. Styles off the top with a spiral tap. AJ digging deep into his bag of tricks, but it's still not enough to keep Gunther down. AJ Styles doing all he can. Springboard moonsault. Will that do it? No, it will not as Gunther gets the shoulder up. You see a sense of urgency out of AJ Styles ever since that power bomb by the ring general. Styles knows the damage was done and the damage was done early. Gunther was going for the kill and AJ Styles is going to have to match that energy tonight to try to keep down the United States champion and leave Vancouver, Canada holding championship gold. And here goes Gunther again, going back to the well with those chops. AJ Styles, his chest is going to look like raw meat leaving vengeance tonight. And that is exactly the blueprint or red print whatever you want to say for Guther in this case as he is just trying to manipulate AJ Styles lifeless body down to the canvas AJ is in trouble right now Guther has gone to the well with some of his best offense and he hasn't wasted much time in this match oh wait a minute Giovanni Vinci trying to mouth off to AJ Styles. This is what we talked about earlier that Styles has got to avoid. They're going to try to take AJ off his game, but AJ's got to stay focused. Nice forearm on Gunther. Would love to see Gunther come out here by himself tonight to defend the United States Championship. But at the end of the day, Imperium is in full intact here in Vancouver, and Styles trying to outrun the ring general there. Nice maneuver. You notice the referee chucking that chair out of the wing. Either Ludwig Kaiser or Vinci must have thrown that in as another distraction attempt. Meanwhile, Styles off the top with the frog splash. Styles is looking good, but does he have what it takes to become the United States champion as Gunther kicks out again? AJ is going to have to dig down deep, have that intestinal fortitude to outlast the ring general. He has thrown a lot at Gunther tonight, make no mistake about it, but Gunther as tough as they come inside the squared circle. As AJ whips the champion off into the corner. Not a lot of wasted motion here on Styles. Oh, wait a minute, again, you see Styles mouthed off to Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci off screen. This is exactly what Imperium wants, and Styles trying to make sure that they ain't getting involved in the decision. Hits the arm drag he was looking for earlier in this matchup. Guther again kicks out, and Styles might be starting to rack his brain as to what he's got to do to become the United States champion tonight. Another neck breaker by Styles. Guther rolling to the outside. AJ's been all over in the last few minutes. Ever since that power bomb, AJ has kicked it into a new gear. Guther trying to regroup, but AJ Styles making sure. It's not on his account, and a brain buster there. Impressive strength by the challenger. And another cover, but Gunther, although lack of enthusiasm in that kick, kick out, excuse me, once again able to survive. AJ is not wasting much motion in this matchup. He's going for a lot of pinfalls. You see, he feels like he's getting closer to becoming champion. A lot of near falls, that is, as Gunther now trying to get out of the predicament he's in. Double underhook throw takes down Styles. Oh, now look at this. German suplex releases it. And it's Guther changing the tides of this matchup in a matter of moments here. AJ trying to roll to the outside to get his wits about him, but Guther going right after him here. And again, just clutching at the head of AJ Styles, trying to pass out the challenger at ringside. AJ might have thrown his best shot after those last few minutes as Guther and Imperium got the number one contender surrounded right now. And Guther again laying in with those chops. 
I do not like AJ Styles' chances. Gunther has, in a matter of moments, changed the momentum and the trajectory of this match. And AJ, as we mentioned, might have thrown his best shot and might, have see, might be watching it go up in smoke right now. His chances of becoming the United States Champion. Oh, but don't count out the phenomenal one. Nice shot there by Gunther. Or to Gunther. Former champion AJ Styles has been on a roll, has not been defeated since he was drafted to Friday Night SmackDown back in March. Will the momentum continue tonight at another near fall off the DDT by Styles? AJ has given it all he has tonight. Win, lose, or draw, this is certainly the best foot forward by the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Counter by Guther there. Oh, wait a minute. Guther's going back to that choke. Lays out with it. And the legs wrapped around the phenomenal one. AJ Styles, who is struggling to stay alive right now. Guther has got it wrenched in tight. He was looking for the submission hold earlier. Can AJ get out of it for a second time? He cannot. AJ taps out to avoid further injury. And Guther retains the United States title. No doubt in my mind that that was Gunther's toughest challenge yet. Not just for the United States title, but in his SmackDown career thus far. But nonetheless, the ring general finds a way to survive, passing out, tapping out his challenger, and he's leaving Vancouver with the gold. Here is your winner, and still WWE United States Champion, AJ Styles had no choice but to tap to avoid further injury. He will live to fight another day. An impressive showing by the challenger, but the ring general's reign as United States champion continues. Who is gonna step up next to Gunther and Imperium on SmackDown? The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Raw Women's Championship. Big fight feel here in Vancouver, Canada as another championship is set to be defended. And is Liv Morgan going to be the one to finally take down the Empress of Tomorrow? Liv became the number one contender in an eight woman over the top rope battle royal a number of weeks ago on Raw last eliminating Becky Lynch. And then seven days later, pinning Becky Lynch's shoulders to the canvas, one, two, three, in the middle of that very ring. Liv has certainly got momentum behind her tonight. But whether momentum has been on the side of the challengers or how a whole army has been against Asuka, she has turned away any and all challengers throughout her championship reigns, has been the champion for the better part of the last 12 months here in WWE. Liv has challenged for the gold before during the reigns of Asuka, but never one-on-one. -on -one. The biggest opportunity of her career. And in a matter of seconds, the mood has just changed inside the Rogers Arena. Liv has got heart. She's got guts. She's the deserving challenger, but I don't know if anything is gonna be enough to keep down this woman. The most feared woman in WWE history. The most dominant woman in the history of WWE. And she is the one with the gold. Your women's champion of the world. It was one year ago at this time that Asuka was taking down the Money in the Bank briefcase that propelled her into a championship reign that expired back in November at Survivor Series and Asuka made quick work of that, invoking a rematch clause just over a month later and winning back the championship gold on January the 1st at the Royal Rumble. Over the last 12 months, Asuka has turned down any and all challengers. Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, Shotzi at the Royal Rumble, Tegan Knox at Elimination Chamber. Four different challengers last month at Backlash, Liv Morgan being one of them. And as we mentioned, even though Liv has challenged for the gold before, this is the first time she's getting Asuka one-on-one -on -one with the championship on the line. Is this the opportunity that Liv has been waiting for, or is the Empress of Tomorrow simply about to add another victim to her long list of turned away challengers? Big fight feel for the Women's Championship of the World here tonight at Vengeance.
Introducing the challenger from Elmwood Park, New Jersey, Liv Morgan. And her opponent from Osaka, Japan. She is the Raw Women's Champion, Asuka. One thing we have to say about the Empress of Tomorrow is lover, liker, hater, you have to respect Asuka and the body of work she has produced, not just in her entire WWE career, not just down at NXT years ago, but just simply over the last 12 months here in WWE. Asuka, as we already mentioned, the most dominant women in WWE history. But is Liv Morgan going to be her kryptonite? We find out right here, right now, as the bell has sounded and the matchup is underway. And Asuka immediately coming out swinging. Kicks and an elbow to Liv Morgan, and the challenger is already finding herself in a precarious situation against the champion. Asuka has systematically picked apart her opponents, turned away any and all challengers, walked into the grandest stage of them all back in February, turned down a returning Becky Lynch, who ever since she made her return just a few weeks prior, had absolutely been on a dominating streak of victories on Monday Night Raw. Asuka does not give a damn who you are, where you've been, or how you earned your gold. Or I should say, chance at the gold. Asuka sits atop the throne, and there's a good reason for it. Liv going for the cover early. Actually got a two count on Asuka, but the Empress of Tomorrow goes without saying. But she is going to be a tough challenger to beat inside of that ring. It's not impossible. We've seen Asuka fall before. The thing is, this is the most dangerous Asuka has ever been in her WWE career. She seemingly just gets better week after week, month after month, match after match. And it only makes it more difficult for opposing challengers. Liv looking good so far, taking the fight to Asuka. Going for another cover and gets the near fall. There's one thing we know about these women's championship matches when the Empress of Tomorrow is involved. It's one thing to take the fight to the champion. It's a whole nother thing to actually have a chance at defeating her. And as great as Liv Morgan, oh look at this, what a maneuver off the apron! Hurricane Rana by Liv, and the Challengers picking up some steam in the early going. And Liv is on the attack, trying to send Asuka to the barricade. You aren't going to have the upper hand against the Empress of Tomorrow for that long. As we were about to mention before, Liv came flying off the apron, as great as she has been over the last couple of weeks, over the last month or so, picking up victories on Monday Night Raw, of course the Battle Royal! And she wanted very similar to how she just sent Asuka out of the ring over the top rope as much momentum as Liv has been picking up on Raw. I don't know how much momentum can really do you any good when Asuka's standing on the other side of the ring. Now Asuka, look at this, going for a submission hold here. Not the Asuka lock that she has tapped out so many opponents with, but definitely has got Liv Morgan all kinds of tangled up. And the thing about Asuka is, she even knows that this maneuver has Liv able to counter out. Asuka's smart. She knows Liv might not tap out in the early going. But as we mentioned, Asuka will systematically pick you apart inside of that ring until you have no choice but to give up from bell to bell. Nice bulldog by the challenger. It's one thing we can say about everybody who's tried to step up for Asuka. It's not that they haven't given it the old hardy chance inside of that ring, but... Asuka is just on a different level than everybody. Liv crashes and burns. Asuka to retain the gold, and Liv kicks out again. If Liv Morgan can somehow pull this victory off, and that is a very big hypothetical situation, it is certainly not going to be without earning it all the way through. See how Asuka has really slowed down the pace just in the few first moments of this matchup. Liv was really starting to pick things up. That Hurricane Ron off the apron immediately tried to keep the offense going on Asuka, but Asuka is going to wrestle her style of match. She's going to beat you down. She's going to pick you apart, and when Asuka says when is when the match will end. And you hear the crowd in Vancouver, not the biggest fan of the Empress of Tomorrow. As we mentioned, though, you can like her, you can love her, you can absolutely hate her guts, but I guess that's what they say about greatness. Everybody hates greatness, but you damn sure better respect what Asuka has done. Liv tried to sneak a pinfall there. Asuka was having none of it. Asuka go for the hip attack, it looked like, but a counter by Liv Morgan. Can't say Liv hasn't done her homework, and 
Off the ropes and the face breaker on Asuka. Will Liv do it? Into the cover here, but Asuka gets the shoulder up. Well, good opportunity by Liv Morgan. She clearly has done her homework. Avoided the hip attack and hit that face breaker. And unfortunately for her, Asuka is going to be a hard puzzle to figure out tonight. You see that momentum does not last long for the challenger. Asuka's right back on the offense. It's almost as if she just absorbs that face breaker, shakes it off, and keeps swinging until she hears the bell sound. Liv Morgan just getting picked apart by Asuka just in a matter of a second there. She's trying to fight back, but the Empress is having none of it. Fire Woman's position there, and Liv getting hung up on the top rope. As we mentioned earlier, Liv Morgan has challenged for the Women's Championship. It was last year since September at Judgment Day when Liv Morgan and Alexa Bliss faced off against Asuka in a triple threat matchup. The Empress retained on that night. And of course, last month in Minneapolis at Backlash, Liv Morgan was one of four challengers in that five-woman elimination match. Made it down to the final three, but ultimately Asuka retained the gold at Backlash. As we mentioned, Liv has competed for the gold, but ultimately Asuka has won on the other side of things, but this is Liv's first chance one-on-one -on -one tonight. She has a chance in hell. There's always a shot in the dark for the challenger to take down Asuka, but right now it looks like Asuka's just almost having fun with the challenger. Sent her to the outside, made her fall down on the floor a couple of times, sends her back in the ring, and see, Asuka's not in a rush to go after Liv. Oh, man, but spikes her with the DDT, does the challenger. We're really giving Asuka a lot of credit in this matchup, but we got to give credit to the challenger right here because Liv, oh, look at this, taking a page out of Alexa Bliss's book, a woman she has tag teamed with on numerous occasions over the last year. If Asuka does not take Liv Morgan seriously tonight, there is very much a chance that Liv can pull off the surprise victory. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Asuka, Asuka locked, locked in. Basically out of nowhere, out of thin air, the submission hold got Liv Morgan all kinds of tied up. Nobody survives the Asuka lock and Liv Morgan is struggling to hold on here. Credit where it's due she is. Oh, look at this. Liv able to break the hold. Liv breaks the hold and delivers a stiff elbow shot to Asuka and the challenger is still fighting from underneath. Liv Morgan knows that championship opportunities are few and far between, and she is not looking to leave the Rogers Arena here in Vancouver empty-handed tonight. Asuka, Asuka Lock gets broken by the challenger, and Liv Morgan right back on the offense here, and the challenger is picking up steam yet again. She's gotta stay focused here. As we mentioned, if Asuka takes Liv, not seriously tonight. Well, she could be leaving herself empty-handed. And Liv Morgan could take advantage. Off the middle rope, and there's a splash by the challenger. Liv Morgan's got a chance in hell right now. She was able to break the Asuka lock, but can she ultimately get the job done? First from the second rope, then from the top rope, and now Liv into the cover. Will that do it enough to keep down the champion? No. Got to think Asuka might have been thrown off her game right there with Liv Morgan breaking the submission hole. That stiff elbow shot to the nose of the Empress of Tomorrow. And Asuka, at the same time, is just trying to get back into this matchup, maybe try to rearrange her blueprint in her head on how to defeat the challenger as Liv just sends her for a ride to the outside of the ring. And now it's Liv Morgan on the top rope, the champion on the ringside here. And Liv goes for the crossbody, but look at the strength by Asuka to catch her and slam her down at ringside. And just like that, in the snap of the fingers, the dangerous, dominating, intimidating champion is back in control. Liv Morgan must have thought she had her right there. Went for the crossbody to Asuka to try to inflict some punishment on the outskirts of the ring, and it only cost her. There's a reason they call it high risk, high reward, and it's because of situations like that. And Asuka now, after a little bit of a pumbling on the outside, sends her challenger back inside the squared circle, and Liv Morgan is not looking good right now. Asuka may be nearing victory, 
Kick to the gut, and I think we know what's coming. This time, she hits the hip attack. She missed it earlier. Oh, wait a minute. A counter by Liv. Look at Liv Morgan go. Face breaker number two. You gotta be kidding me. She's gonna upset the champion. She is gonna do it. No, Asuka got the shoulder up again. A hell of a sequence of maneuvers right there as Asuka hit the hip attack. Might have been going for the Asuka lock or at least another strike. Liv was able to counter it and ultimately hit her second face breaker off the match off the springboard and turn the ropes. Wasn't enough to keep down the champion, but Liv is keeping the momentum going here. On the top rope, Frankensteiner sends Asuka halfway across the ring. Vancouver Canada coming unglued. Flatliner by Liv Morgan. And she's not done just yet. A second one. Liv Morgan into the cover. She's got Asuka dead center of the ring. No. How close was that? And a counter by the champion. And that may have been Liv Morgan's best chance to try to defeat the champion tonight. Liv Morgan hit that face breaker, hit the Frankensteiner off the top, double flatliners, and somehow Asuka still continues to press forward. And credit where it's due, Liv Morgan keeping her foot on the gas pedal, not letting Asuka continuing in this matchup hinder her confidence there, but it may be hindering her decision making as she crashed and burned on the outside again. We are still going in this women's championship matchup, and what a match it has been. And dare I say, Asuka's put down some incredible athletes inside that squared circle, but Liv Morgan may be giving her the best run for her money thus far in her championship reign. I really thought Liv Morgan had it off those double flatliners. Asuka was dead center of the ring. She was out, but somehow the champion was able Maybe out of adrenaline, maybe out of instinct, but was able to survive nonetheless. Now this brawl out ringside getting taken back inside the squared circle. Referee at a count of six. Asuka back in. So is the challenger. Liv Morgan is on her tail. Drop toe hold. Now look at Liv Morgan disrespecting the champion. Well, there may be a genius decision or may have just pissed off the champion here who goes down low. Oh, Liv Morgan just running through the champion. But Asuka's right there. Collar and elbow and hangs the challenger, excuse me, up on the top rope. Now Asuka with a couple of strikes. Backhand. Asuka just disrespecting the challenger right back at her. And what a spinning kick that we have seen Asuka utilize against her best opponents. That is a knockout blow any day of the week, twice on Vengeance Sunday. And Asuka, you see she's just going to a new gear right now. She is ticked off that Liv Morgan is giving her such a fight. Beating her down, closed fist, boots to the face. The Empress of Tomorrow may have just had enough of Liv Morgan and her women's championship opportunity tonight as she sends her to the outside. You see the thing about Asuka, she could have easily allowed the referee to start counting out Liv Morgan there. But the Empress of Tomorrow would rather beat down the challenger and simply make a statement and either a pinfall or tap out over Liv Morgan tonight. And that is one of the reasons, again, where you might not like Asuka. Asuka, excuse me, you might hate her, you might love her, but you damn sure better respect what she does inside of that ring. They're trying to get back into this with a simple yet effective axe hammer off the apron, but how long will it keep the champion down? Sends her into the ring steps here. That is a hard shot. Referee's at a count of six. Liv Morgan smart to break it here. Now Liv is heading back up to the top rope. And I don't know how smart this is as this has failed numerous occasions throughout this match. This time hits the cross body at least enough to take Asuka off her feet. Liv Morgan went high earlier. A crash and burn situation on a few occasions. That time it works out in the challenger's favor. But she's got to get the champion back inside of the ring and get the shoulders counted down for three. 
And Asuka going to make sure that that does not happen on her watch. And what a match this has been. What a night it has been here at the Rogers Arena in Vancouver, Canada. Every single matchup from bell to bell absolutely tearing the roof off this building. And Asuka and Liv Morgan doing the same right now. All in the means of leaving your WWE Women's Champion. Pinfall by Asuka. Will that do it? Not just yet as Liv Morgan kicks out again. Back and forth we go in this women's championship match as Liv Morgan takes Asuka off her feet. A double stomp, a kick. Will the challenger be leaving a champion? Hard elbow there, ragdolls Asuka. What a whiplash off the canvas. We saw Asuka really kicking things into a new gear, just trying to beat down her challenger a few minutes ago with those closed fists and those kicks to the face. Liv Morgan's gonna get a little extreme herself. Oh, off the ropes, the tilt to world head scissors. Now it's Asuka heading to the outside. On retreat from Liv Morgan. Trying to withstand this onslaught. And this time, the roles are reversed. And it's Liv Morgan snapping Asuka off the top rope and sending her to the outside of the ring. And Asuka is down and out. And obviously a sense of urgency out of Liv Morgan as she comes off the apron there. As Liv has got to get Asuka inside of the ring to become the champion tonight. A count out will not do Liv any good. It certainly will retain Asuka her gold though. And Asuka may just have to resort to that because Liv Morgan will not stay down in this match. And once again back inside the ring. Liv kips up. But Asuka's right there with that simple tackle. Just absolutely having enough of her challenger. This may be the women's match of the year thus far. Wait a minute, Liv Morgan trying to steal the win. No. And every woman that has been in there with Asuka has gave it, given her a fight. Another flatliner by Liv Morgan out of nowhere. Liv was going for the cover, but Asuka saved by the ropes. And that may have just saved her women's championship, at least for another moment in this contest. And you see Asuka's own momentum sending her over the top rope that time. I think that speaks volumes to the damage that Liv Morgan has done to the Empress of Tomorrow throughout this matchup. Asuka has not seen this kind of punishment dished out from anybody over the last 12 months. Shotzi, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan at one point, Alexa Bliss, Tegan Knox, Becky Lynch, all women, and not even all of the women that have fallen to Asuka. But Liv Morgan in her first one-on-one -on -one matchup for the championship tonight! Going all out, but unfortunately does not go all in off that landing. Crash and burn if she was going for the Topekin Hilo on the champion. And that may have just handed the momentum of this match on a silver platter back to Asuka, who hits the hip attack for the second time. And that is going to do it. Asuka. Wah! Liv Morgan kicks out again. You have got to be kidding me right now. That is the second hip attack. No one has usually withstand one, but somehow Liv still fighting and spikes the champion with the DDT dead center of the ring. Your women's championship of the world being defended loud and proud right now here in the Rogers Arena Sunday night, May the 14th, 2023 at Vengeance. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada getting a treat. Liv and Asuka, no matter who you're supporting in this matchup, are tearing down the house. And win, lose, or draw for the challenger. This has certainly been Asuka's tough, toughest opponent thus far. Liv not looking to come out of this matchup empty-handed after all the effort she has withstood in this match. And Asuka back into it off that trapped arm belly to belly. Now Liv on the apron, and she just gets sent for the fall by the champion. Oh no, and now Asuka, the tides shift in this matchup. Liv is the one who's gone high risk, but now the Empress of Tomorrow may be feeling desperate. Cross body by Asuka. Asuka has got to be racking her brain right now. We're going to have to check the record books, but this may be the lengthiest women's championship defense in her reign thus far as no one has been able to withstand Asuka 
to this limit over the last 12 months. And Liv using the announce table face first and a flat liner on the outside of the ring. For the fourth time in this matchup, Liv is going to the well with one of her best maneuvers, but she hits it this time on the outside of the ring and she's got to get the champion back between the ropes. Certainly some massive damage done on the outside of the ring by Liv Morgan. And there's a counter by Asuka here. Now it's Asuka sending Liv back inside of the ring. Somehow Asuka is still swinging after that onslaught at ringside by the challenger. Snap German by the Empress of Tomorrow. An incredible matchup we are witnessing right now. Just imagine being any of the women back in the locker room thinking you're going to have a chance possibly soon at becoming the number one contender for the women's championship regardless of who wins this matchup. You gotta be thinking when it's your opportunity, when it's next to step up, you might have to fight one of these women. And Liv Morgan certainly impressing the world tonight, showing she is worthy of being in the main event here in the WWE. Liv is not done. You notice Liv, even after she regained the momentum over Asuka, and even after that flatliner on the outside, not even going for the pinfall yet, she knows she's gotta do massive damage to the Empress of Tomorrow. Asuka back to the outside, and Liv has got her scouted. Going for the Topekin hero again, and this time she hits it. Liv Morgan may be on the verge of the biggest upset of 2023 if she can get Asuka back inside that squared circle and keep her shoulders down for the three count. Asuka's dazed, but Liv Morgan not going for the pinfall just yet. I think Liv knows that Asuka has a chance of kicking out. And Liv is going to have to throw literally everything she's got, every ounce of energy left in her body, every ounce of energy left in her soul to defeat the women's champion tonight. Another counter by Liv. Here comes the challenger. Drop toe hold at Asuka face first off the canvas. Asuka is in trouble. And that is not something we have said very often, if at all, in her championship reign. The Empress of Tomorrow is shook right now. The challenger's not even going for the pinfall yet. She is just swinging for the fences, looking for the home run, looking for the Grand Slam, looking to leave Vancouver, Canada, the women's champion of the world. Asuka went for the clothesline, Liv ducked out of it, tilt to whirl, head scissors again, and the champion has got no answer for the challenger. The well, flat liner on the outside may have done some serious damage. Asuka showed some signs of life, but Liv has flipped the switch in this matchup, and the challenger is coming completely unglued. She's throwing haymakers, throwing lefts, throwing rights, chops, forearms, whipping Asuka off, and Asuka doesn't even have the energy to get back to her feet. Liv Morgan's got her scattered again. Flat liner for a one, two, three, four, fifth time in this match. The three count! Liv Morgan has done it! The reign of the Empress of Tomorrow comes crashing down on Sunday night, May the 14th in Vancouver, Canada at Vengeance! Here is your winner, and the new Raw Women's Champion, Liv! We will be telling the story of how Liv Morgan, the underdog, walked into the biggest matchup of her career and upset the most dominant champion in WWE history here tonight at Vancouver for years and years to come. New Women's Champion of the World, Liv Morgan is leaving with the gold after an incredible fight. And somehow we are still not done tonight. The Friday Night SmackDown main event is coming up next for the World Heavyweight Championship. Braun Breaker is out to make a name for himself, out to create his own legend, but McIntyre, the champion, is looking to teach Breaker a lesson in respect. They call him a blue chipper athlete, a former two-time NXT champion. His name is Braun Breaker. Drafted to Friday Night SmackDown, with hopes of being the next big thing in WWE. Braun showed promise week after week, raking up victories left and right, 
all the while catching the attention of the World Heavyweight Champion, Drew McIntyre. When similar enemies brought together the face and the future of SmackDown, McIntyre and Breaker steamrolled over their opponents, but when opportunity came knocking, Braun kicked down the door with emphatic force. Braun Breaker's mission has been simple, seek, destroy, and become the man on the blue brand. Ever since Braun Breaker made his intentions clear, he has simply become more dangerous than ever. But a pissed off Scottish warrior is hell bent on teaching SmackDown's top prospect a lesson in respect. With the World Heavyweight Championship at stake, these two bulls are set to lock horns and leave it all on the table in the means of victory. Will Breaker's path of carnage continue and lead him to gold? Or is Drew McIntyre too motivated and focused to be a stepping stone for anyone? Two of SmackDown's best for the Blue Brand's richest prize collide right here, right now, at Vengeance! He who has the gold has the power. And the former two-time NXT World Champion, who has been making a name for himself on Friday Night SmackDown for the last number of months, is looking to create his own legacy, build his own legend, and gain all the power on the blue brand tonight. The blue chipper athlete, Braun Breaker, has taken Friday Night SmackDown by storm, has yet to smell defeat, but tonight he has got a target as wide as his own back is with Drew McIntyre and the sight he has set on the challenger. Ron Breaker made his bed, but he very well may have to sleep in it if the World Heavyweight Champion has any say. Two heavyweights about to collide for the world's richest gold on Friday Night SmackDown. Ron Breaker, once the World Heavyweight Champion, was not about to wait at the back of the line and wait for his opportunity. He targeted Drew McIntyre when McIntyre least expected it. And ever since then, it's been chaos and disorder keeping these two men apart on Friday Night SmackDown. Ron Breaker's locked and loaded, but so is the World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew. McIntyre! McIntyre arrives in the Rogers Arena, laser focused on retaining the gold and not just walking away with his World Heavyweight title, but showing Braun Breaker an ounce of respect tonight. Drew McIntyre was caught off guard a number of weeks ago when Braun Breaker turned his back on the champ. McIntyre retaliated seven days later with a pair of Claymore kicks to his challenger. And what about what happened just 48 hours ago on SmackDown? Braun Breaker, spine buster to the champion, straight through the announce table. And that was of course coming moments after yet another victory for the young man in Braun Breaker. You gotta wonder the condition of the World Heavyweight Champion tonight. We know that his heart is in it. We know that his mind is laser focused. But at the end of the day, will McIntyre's body be able to keep up after Braun Breaker laid waste to the champion just 48 hours ago? It is a big fight feel as quite frankly, it has been all night long here at the Rogers Arena. Dare I say, this has been the biggest, this has been the best live premiere event, not just of the season, but in Noah Nation Gaming Universe Mode history so far tonight, and it's only gonna get better as the Friday Night SmackDown main event is about to be served. Drew McIntyre won the gold back at WrestleMania. He retained it last month at Backlash in a match of the year candidate against John Cena, but will he get through the young, hungry Braun Breaker tonight? Will Braun Breaker be leaving the new World Champion? Introducing the challenger from Woodstock, Georgia, weighing in at 230 pounds, Braun Breaker. And his opponent, 
from Ayr, Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds. He is the World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. It is the blue chipper and Braun Breaker there's quite frankly a thoroughbred in Drew McIntyre. And there is the goal that is at stake. Is this the closest Braun Breaker is going to get to said gold, or will he be leaving with it wrapped around his waist tonight? The Friday Night SmackDown main event is right here upon us in Vancouver. Braun Breaker, his biggest match of his career, his very first opportunity at Drew McIntyre. McIntyre looking for his pound of flesh, and we are underway. It's going to be a big match. Oh, wait a minute. Braun Breaker trying to score the victory early here, taking the big man off his feet. But McIntyre is not going to go down without a shot in hell. It'll be very interesting to see how this match progresses. As we mentioned, it has been chaos and disorder trying to keep these two men apart, which, quite, quite frankly, nobody has been able to keep these two men apart the last number of weeks on SmackDown. It has been shots from behind, just like you saw from Drew McIntyre right there. And a McIntyre muscling up the challenger, which is no easy task. Heavyweight to heavyweight off that powerbomb. As we mentioned, Drew McIntyre winning the World Heavyweight Championship back in February at WrestleMania, defeating Seth Rollins in the main event. He earned that opportunity, outlasting five other SmackDown superstars back in January inside the Elimination Chamber. Of course, just last month, Drew McIntyre, John Cena tearing down the house at Backlash for the World Heavyweight title. McIntyre retaining the gold, and Braun Breaker sidestepped and crashed and burned by the challenger. Braun has used that over-the-top rope leap in recent weeks on Dolph Ziggler, aiding him in victory, but McIntyre clearly has been paying attention to Braun Breaker's arsenal. And the very interesting part about this match is certainly going to be the veteran experience of McIntyre compared to Braun Breaker, who has been in main events before, just not on Raw, Raw or SmackDown, excuse me. McIntyre pumbling the challenger at ringside. McIntyre has been waiting for this for weeks to teach Braun Breaker a lesson in respect. Remember what McIntyre said? He said you could have just asked if you wanted a world championship match. McIntyre's been a fighting champion, and he certainly would have awarded a man who has been undefeated since joining SmackDown. But Braun Breaker chose the road he chose, and he's going to have to face the consequences tonight and possibly come up short off an angry Drew McIntyre. But Braun right now, what a suplex on the outside. Blue chipper athlete, former two-time NXT champion. He's already made waves in his young career on NXT and SmackDown, and what a win it could be tonight for Breaker, stepping into the biggest match of his career, live premiere event, Vancouver, Canada, and walks away with the rich prize of the World Heavyweight Championship. Gold that has been in his family before. Of course, Scott Steiner, a former World Heavyweight Champion. Imagine if Braun Breaker can add to that family lineage and win the big gold belt again. McIntyre trying to get back into this, but a nice slam by Breaker, like him or not. Ron Breaker getting caught by Drew McIntyre. McIntyre, if there's one thing we know about the champion, is that he's resilient as all hell. And he's going to keep swinging until there's absolutely nothing left in the tank. McIntyre knows what it's like to be on the losing end. He spent the better part of 2022 coming up short in these types of matches. Big fight feels, and McIntyre's not looking to feel that again. Look at this, Kimura lock by Drew McIntyre. A submission hold rare out of the arsenal of Drew, but Braun Breaker able to escape it. There's one thing Drew McIntyre usually has in these matchups. Wait a minute here, belly to belly on Breaker. McIntyre usually has the strength advantage. I don't know if it's the same tonight, but McIntyre successfully goes to the air on the challenger. Braun went for a similar dive earlier, crashed and burned, and McIntyre, that's that experience we were talking about, knew when to throw in that Topek and Hilo over the top rope, and he landed it flush. It was a ginormous competitor landing on you at ringside. That is not going to do Breaker any good if this match nears championship rounds. 
Braun Breaker has shown signs of life in this matchup. Has proved himself as a worthy challenger, but Drew McIntyre has really got an answer for a lot of Braun's offense so far in this contest. Nice scoop and a slam by the challenger. Will that do it? Not just yet. We saw how much offense Drew McIntyre withstood back at Backlash against John Cena. You remember that attitude adjustment through the announce table? McIntyre still survived that, but will he survive the onslaught of Breaker tonight? And as we mentioned just 48 hours ago on SmackDown, Braun Breaker with that spine buster through the announce table. You gotta wonder how the rib cage and the entire back of McIntyre is feeling after that. And Breaker. Frankensteiner from the top rope move that his family helped make famous. To win the title now. Vancouver, Canada coming unglued for these two SmackDown All-Stars. World Heavyweight Championships in the line. There's a sidestep by McIntyre. We've been getting served restaurant quality contest all night long here at Vengeance. It is continuing right here in your Friday night SmackDown portion of the main event. Braun into the cover off another moonsault, but McIntyre again kicks out. As we mentioned on multiple occasions, Braun Breaker's biggest match of his career. You gotta wonder if there's any nerves in, Bru in Braun Breaker tonight. He's certainly not gonna show him, but he's gonna make costly missteps like that. Go into the well way too many times off that moonsault, and it absolutely cost him. McIntyre now back on the offense. And again for Drew, it's all about teaching Braun Breaker some respect. That's the underlining factor on top of, of course, retaining his World Heavyweight Championship. Drew McIntyre's been in Braun Breaker's situation. A young superstar with loads of promise and an attitude a mile long, looking to be the main event. And McIntyre's trying to show Braun Breaker that there's another way to achieve your dreams. And Drew's trying to do that by tapping out Braun Breaker right now, but Breaker again able to escape that Kimura lock. Drew McIntyre adding some submission holds, some definitely some harder to escape maneuvers. Wait a minute, Drew! Future shock DDT on Braun Breaker! Drew McIntyre laying out Braun, but not going for the cover as he wants to put the final nail in Braun Breaker's opportunity tonight. Goes for the Claymore, but Braun Breaker had it scouted. At least for a moment there, McIntyre, you see the hurry up offense by the World Heavyweight Champion. That was a big sidestep by Braun Breaker. Remember McIntyre laid out the challenger with not one but two Claymore kicks a few weeks ago on SmackDown. Tonight he had the maneuver scouted. Will this be Braun Breaker's chance to capitalize on that reversal and try to become the World Heavyweight Champion? Muscles up McIntyre and down to the canvas he goes. Will the blue chipper be able to outrun the thoroughbred of SmackDown tonight and become the new face of Friday nights? We will find out in moments here at Vengeance. And now Braun, look at this. Camel clutch on the World Heavyweight Champion. And with the unknown condition of the spine and the back of Drew McIntyre, this has got to hurt a whole lot of hell. Oh, wait a minute, McIntyre. Nice elbow strike there and takes Braun Breaker off his feet. Drew McIntyre has had an answer for Braun tonight. It's been back and forth for the majority of this contest. But I would say Drew McIntyre has been in control more often than not. Braun is dazed again. McIntyre went to the well. A second time off that dive. This time, Braun Breaker saw it coming a mile away. A rare error out of the World Heavyweight Champion, Drew McIntyre. And now Braun's looking to take advantage on the outskirts of the ring. Sits out with it, and down goes Drew. Drew McIntyre may have costed himself his own World Heavyweight Championship, trying to take things to the air yet again, but never count out the World Heavyweight Champion, Drew McIntyre. Look at this, look at the strength of the Scottish Warrior there. Turning into a backbreaker on the challenger. McIntyre sending Braun Breaker back into the ring. These two bulls have been clashing from bell to bell, from pillar to post so far, back and forth the majority of this contest. You gotta be nearing an end, you gotta believe there's only so much of this high intensity offense that you can dish out and also take in return before your body starts to fail on you. And Braun Breaker able to kick out, but how much more does the challenger and quite frankly the champion still have left? 
Another scoop slam by Breaker as Vancouver giving SmackDown superstars their appreciation tonight. Oh, wait a minute, Braun. They've been looking for a belly to belly there, and another counter by McIntyre. Just a close fist by Drew. Drew McIntyre. Look at this, the ground and pound on Braun. Looking to teach the young man a lesson in respect he won't soon forget tonight. McIntyre, as we mentioned, trying to show Braun Breaker that there's another way to achieve your dreams. There's another way to make your way to the main event of WWE and be a champion. And it's not by cowardly acts, attacks from behind. McIntyre, look at this. Pedal to the metal right there. The throw on Breaker, the World Heavyweight Champion, has got Vancouver rally behind him right now. Counter by Breaker, and almost a jaw breaker to Drew. Could the World Championship be changing hands in a matter of moments? We're gonna find out. Another reversal by Braun Breaker has led him to some momentum here, but Drew McIntyre not one to give up without a fight as we have talked about all throughout tonight and all throughout his championship reign. Down goes the challenger again. Braun Breaker may be getting exposed right now under the bright lights, under the bright lights of the main event. The biggest stage of his career. Braun Breaker may have bit off more than he can chew with the World Heavyweight Champion, Drew McIntyre. I think McIntyre's trying to show Breaker that he was not ready for the spotlight, that he was not ready for the main event. And Drew is looking to teach this young man a lesson he won't soon forget. A Claymore kick. This time, it nails Flush. Drew McIntyre retains the World Heavyweight title. Thanks for coming, Braun Breaker. You can't say the young man didn't put a target on his own back, and tonight McIntyre hit the target dead on and is leaving Vancouver with the championship gold. Here is your winner, and still, World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. The former two-time NXT Champion has been impressive. But if tonight showed anything, it's that Braun Breaker has got a lot to learn in his WWE career. And then it comes with to stepping up to man like Drew McIntyre to try to step up to the main event scene, live to fight another day, because right now we are living in the era of the Scottish Warrior. Drew McIntyre made his way through WrestleMania, has retained against John Cena, against Braun Breaker, and McIntyre is on top of the world, on top of Friday Night SmackDown as the face of the blue brand, and is leaving Vancouver Canada in vengeance, still your World Heavyweight Champion. That victory after everything McIntyre's been through these last few weeks has gotta feel good. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, it is your main event here at Vengeance. The Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar, the original bro, Matt Riddle, for the first time ever, and the WWE title is up for grabs. A reward as rich as the WWE Championship brings together the world's toughest fighters to see who can be the last man standing who truly deserves to be called a champion. Tonight is no different. Two men stand on opposite sides of the ring with only the intentions of surviving and thriving. The challenger, the most decorated athlete in combat sports history. The beast, the conqueror, Brock Lesnar. Ever since his return back in January, Lesnar has left a car wreck of bodies behind him, and at Backlash, the Beast secured another chance to march to the top of the mountain in WWE. The champion, the realist, the fighter, the bro, Matt Riddle. He has been through hell and back, and has come out on the other side a better man. But even after everything Riddle has fought through, does he have what it takes to keep down the Beast Incarnate? It has been all out anarchy and chaos for weeks on Monday Night Raw as Riddle and Lesnar have fought to gain the advantage all the while battling a reoccurring issue with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. With the KO and Sami show out of the picture tonight at Vengeance, 
Lesnar, and Riddle focus on destroying the other, who will outlast the opposer, be the last man standing on his own two feet, and walk away draped in gold. For the first time ever, Brock Lesnar meets Matt Riddle for the WWE Championship. And if recent weeks have told us anything, this will be a showcase of violence in Vancouver. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Championship! It is main event time at the Rogers Arena in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. The WWE Championship is on the line and here comes your number one contender, The Beast. The Conqueror, the alpha male of our species, Brock Lesnar. For the first time ever, Lesnar meets the original bro, Matt Riddle from bell to bell. But of course, the last number of weeks, as you just saw in the video package, have been all out anarchy on Monday Night Raw. Lesnar, Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn getting involved. Brawls left and right, tables being broken. It has been chaos to keep up with on Monday nights. But tonight, it all comes down to this. Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle, the title's on the line, and something's got to give because only one man is leaving Canada, the WWE Champion, and the face of Monday Night Raw. Brock Lesnar is a 10-time world champion here in the WWE. The most decorated athlete in combat sports history is looking to add another championship reign to his already Hall of Fame career. Lesnar is fired up tonight. He went through four other Monday Night Raw superstars back in his hometown of Minneapolis at Backlash to earn this opportunity and become the number one contender. Lesnar laser focus at the task at hand at Matt Riddle, who has been to hell and back not only over the last year, but just in the last couple of months as the WWE Champion has got his biggest task ahead. Vancouver comes unglued for your reigning defending WWE Champion. The original bro Matt Riddle has turned away Randy Orton, his former best friend, on not one but two occasions. Once at WrestleMania, and then of course in that high stakes hell in a cell match at Backlash last month. Riddle has also successfully retained his WWE Championship on the Raw after WrestleMania against Sami Zayn. But tonight Riddle goes one on one with a man he has quite frankly been calling out for years. Brock Lesnar. There's a lot more writing on this matchup than just as what has taken place the last few weeks on Raw. Riddle has wanted to test his strengths, test his abilities against the Beast Incarnate. Two legit fighters inside of that ring. And they are about to put the Dukes up and see who's the better man and who will leave Vancouver, Canada with the gold of the WWE. Big fight feel as it's been all night long. Let's send things down to the ring for the official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 295 pounds, Brock Lesnar. And his opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing in at 216 pounds. He is the WWE Champion, the original bro, Matt Riddle. The stage is set. The time is now Sunday night, May the 14th, 2023. Rogers Arena, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, WWE Vengeance, we are live for your main event, the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar versus the original bro Matt Riddle, and the WWE Championship is on the line. It has been an awesome night. We thank you for joining us so far here at Vengeance. 
But the main attraction is up and is live. Brock Lesnar and Riddle. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Riddle went for a knee, missed immediately, and Lesnar is looking to take this thing to Suplex City. Riddle cannot allow Brock Lesnar to wrestle his style of match, because if that is the case, it is going to be a long night in Vancouver for the defending champ. And you remember what happened this past Monday night on Raw? Matt Riddle put through not one but two tables, not in the ring or at ringside, but in the middle of the WWE Universe out in the crowd at Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Gotta wonder the condition of Matt Riddle coming into this thing, and hell, even the condition of Brock Lesnar. He may be looking dangerous right now. It was just a few weeks ago that Kevin Owens laid out the Beast Incarnate with a stunner at ringside, followed it up with a stunner through the announce table. At the end of the day, we are here, we are now, and it's time to put up or shut up and see what you're made of if you want to walk away the champion of the WWE. So far, Lesnar is all over Matt Riddle, and a clothesline takes down the champ. Riddle tried to come out swinging off the bell with that knee, and it has only been a disadvantage as Brock Lesnar is having his way with Matt Riddle. Vancouver, Canada recognizing Suplex City, and there's an Inseguri after the counter by Riddle. And another knee, that's the one he was looking for a few minutes ago. And Brock Lesnar a little dazed, heading to the outside. Riddle now going up top. Matt Riddle knows he's going to have to pull out some old tricks, or quite frankly, some new ones, to keep down the Beast Incarnate tonight. Matt Riddle throwing haymakers, but Brock Lesnar is looking to victimize the original bro. Into the cover goes Lesnar. First one of the matchup to become the champion, not just yet. For the last month alone, Riddle has fought Randy Orton inside Hell in a Cell. He had a bruising matchup against Solo Sokoa a few weeks back. And then, of course, was in the middle of a matchup with Kevin Owens this past Monday night on Raw before the Beast Incarnate interrupted and laid waste to everybody, including Sami Zayn, who was at ringside in Kevin Owens' corner. Nice knee by Riddle takes down Lesnar, but the thing about taking Lesnar off his feet is it's one thing to get him off his feet, it's another thing to keep him down, especially for the three count. Go back and look at Brock Lesnar's career, gonna find a lot more wins than losses throughout his legendary Hall of Fame career. And as we mentioned earlier, former 10-time World Heavyweight Champion. Looking to become an 11-time champion tonight, looking to spoil the first ever World Championship reign of Matt Riddle. Riddle has fought long and hard. He has, over the last year, fought a war with Randy Orton that came to a conclusion at Backlash. Riddle is the winner of this year's Royal Rumble matchup, won the main event of WrestleMania. If there's anybody who can keep down the Beast Incarnate, you gotta think the bro has got it in him to do so. Oh, wait a minute here. Things spilled to the outside, and Riddle, well, at least was trying to take apart the announce table, and Lesnar having none of it. Lesnar taking his eye off the ball, and there's Riddle utilizing the announce table again. You gotta wonder if Matt Riddle has really put together a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Hell, maybe all the way to a plan Z to try to beat Brock Lesnar tonight. Trying to take apart the announce table at ringside. Lesnar at least avoided disaster for a moment. The Riddle better be careful because Lesnar, as we saw on Monday Night Raw, knows how to use a table to his, to his advantage. Another German suplex out of the beast, Brock Lesnar. I don't even know how many that's been so far, but Matt Riddle has certainly been to Suplex City so far in this matchup. Especially through all the variations, Lesnar's just throwing Riddle around the ring and around ringside here. And now the open palm strikes from the original bro. Two shoot fighters in there right now. This is a test of who is going to be the man on Monday Night Raw. Lesnar rolling to the outside, trying to catch a breather as Riddle was starting to unload there, adding fuel to the fire of this main event match. You notice Riddle just allowing Brock Lesnar, well, at least for a moment, to get back into the ring. Riddle smart to catch a breather, and now going to the top rope. And here he comes off the top, dropping the elbow to the outside. We mentioned it earlier, we will say it again. Riddle gonna have to dig down in his bag of tricks and have a plan A all the way to a plan Z 
and different ways to beat Brock Lesnar tonight. We may see, see things out of the WWE Champion that quite frankly we have never seen before. Oh man, Lesnar just throwing Riddle right into those steel steps. Nothing pretty about that, but it's certainly gonna knock the wind out of you. Hell, that could break a rib. Lesnar surprisingly is the one to make his way back into the ring first. Can't win the championship on a count out, but Matt Riddle making his way to the outside of the ring. Riddle's eyeing up this announce table. He has got something in mind for the Beast Incarnate here tonight in Vancouver at a senton on the outside. I would never say it's a smart idea to brawl with the conqueror Brock Lesnar, but clearly Matt Riddle is confident in his abilities to do so, but Lesnar says otherwise off that elbow. There's a forearm by Riddle as the brawl continues on the outskirts of the squared circle. Riddle breaking the count yet again as Lesnar is down and out on the outside. A rare sight to see, but the Beast may just be tamed tonight by hands of your WWE Champion. Lesnar trying to get to his feet. But Riddle's trying to get at him there. Looked like he was going for a Superman punch. Lesnar was able to avoid it. And now Brock is smart to head back into the ring. Whether you like it or not, the challenger knows he can't win this match on the outside. And whatever Riddle's got in mind involves the outskirts of the ring. Hanging up Lesnar on the top rope. He's got Lesnar down. It might be a smart idea to just try to pin Brock Lesnar. Forget whatever you had going on the outside. Try to beat the Beast to get the hell out of Dodge. Riddle off the top. Variation of the Axe Hammer. Into the cover on Lesnar and only a one count. After everything these men have thrown at each other the last few minutes. This brawl that we are witnessing in this match. Lesnar gets the shoulder up at one. Riddle dropping another senton. Lesnar is down, dead center of the ring. Matt Riddle going for a Broton off the top rope. And immediately into the cover to retain the WWE Championship, not just yet. That was a far reach for Riddle. A Broton nearly halfway across the ring. And wait a minute, Bro Derek. And that may do it. Lesnar kicks out again. Matt Riddle trying to put the beast away and leave Vancouver the WWE Champion, but Brock Lesnar will be damned if he loses tonight. Broton nearly halfway across the ring, followed by the bro Derek, and the original bro crashes and burns. And Brock Lesnar sees a window of opportunity and you know the beast is gonna strike. Down goes Riddle at ringside. We said it earlier, we will say it again. Lesnar is looking to victimize the original bro tonight. But Riddle's got something else in mind. Lesnar up on the announce table. Wait a minute here, wait a minute. Matt Riddle's wheels are spinning. Brock Lesnar hoisted in the air. Oh my God! Tombstone pile driver through the announce table. Matt Riddle knows that it was not going to be an easy task to retain the WWE Championship tonight. And Riddle was going to have to take a page out of his former best friend Randy Orton's book and go to a place he's never been before. Lesnar is out. Or at least for a moment, the Beast is somehow stirring off that tombstone. Wait a minute. At five position inside the ring. Riddle's trying to avoid it. Lesnar somehow is on his feet, went for the F5. Riddle somehow was able to avoid it, and I don't know how the hell Brock is still standing right now. This match is awesome. This is the main event. This is what it's all about for the WWE Championship. What a punch. Shot to the rib cage, and now Lesnar with Riddle in the air. The F5 by the Beast Incarnate. We're gonna have a new WWE Champion. No, Riddle kicks out. Riddle kicks out. And the reign of the original bro lives on at least for another moment. 
How the hell Brock Lesnar is still moving after that tombstone pile driver through the announce table? God only knows, but if anybody can get up, survive, and come back and win, look no further than the beast, than the man they call the alpha male of our species, Brock Lesnar. And credit where it's due to Matt Riddle. Lesnar threw, to, threw him down with the F5, a move that Riddle has felt on numerous occasions the last couple of weeks, but Matt Riddle was able to kick out. This is what the WWE Championship being defended in the main event, live premiere event here at Vengeance is all about. Meanwhile, Lesnar, belly to belly, Suplex City continues. Riddle cannot allow Brock Lesnar to rally here. Because if Brock Lesnar continues to victimize Riddle, we will have a new WWE Champion crowned. Lesnar is all over the champion right now. Riddle may have kicked out, but he may have just further delayed more punishment and more, quite frankly, the finish of this matchup. Another cover there, and Riddle gets the shoulder up. And look at that, look at Brock Lesnar. You normally don't see him questioning his own abilities inside of the ring. And maybe that's not the case. Maybe he's just questioning what he's gonna have to do to keep Riddle down. It's been well documented everything Matt Riddle has been through over the last, no oh, Brock Lesnar has been busted wide open off that elbow. And that may pay Matt Riddle dividends. Riddle went through that spotlight at the hands of Sol Sokoa over a month ago. He went through Hell in a Cell with Randy Orton at Backlash. Riddle has fought back from the worst of them. Can he survive the beast tonight? And Lesnar being busted wide open is not going to go well for the beast. Riddle trying to get back into this match. Lesnar's been all over him. It's almost as if that tombstone pile driver woke up the challenger who now gets sent to the outside. Lesnar down and out, Riddle heading back to the top rope. Oh my, Broton, or excuse me, a floating bro on Brock Lesnar to the outside of the ring. And Brock Lesnar's rib cage has gotta be screaming for mercy right now. Riddle's just gotta be running off adrenaline at this point as he hits his second bro Derek of the match. And that has gotta do it to retain the WWE title. Lesnar kicks out again. How the hell are either of these men still fighting in this match? And Riddle trying to lock up Brock Lesnar with a submission hold. The move that tapped out Randy Orton and banished Orton from Monday Night Raw inside Hell in the Cell last month. Riddle's got it locked in tight. I don't know if Brock Lesnar has even tapped out once in his career. I don't know if we're gonna see it tonight, but Matt Riddle may just be the man to do it for the first time. And Lesnar though, not gonna have it. Breaks the hold of the champion and the bloody beast incarnate is still swinging in this main event. There's a reason he is, oh man, Rizzo pulling down the top rope and Lesnar just went flying. I was about to say that there's a reason that Brock Lesnar is the most decorated athlete in combat sports history. It's because of fights like tonight and fights that he has fought and come back and won. See the blood getting in the eye of Brock Lesnar as Matt Riddle sends him over the top rope and to the outside again. I don't know what Matt Riddle's got in mind or if he's questioning right now. If he, if he has what it takes to keep down Lesnar. Went for the axe hammer, missed it wildly, and now Brock Lesnar finds himself in control. Double underhook, Brock Lesnar going back to the well with what's worked. What has awarded Lesnar 10 championships, world championships throughout his career. Suplex City absolutely victimizing his opponent. Lesnar looked like he was going for another F5 there. I don't know if Riddle countered it or if that's even what Lesnar had in mind. But another suplex variation by Lesnar. Brock going after Riddle. Riddle's got a fight and he's got a fight now. It's very rare you see the champion in an underdog position, but it is certainly that case tonight. But Riddle is holding his own throughout this matchup with Lesnar. Oh my goodness, could have been going for a pile driver there, but Lesnar countered. 
and Lesnar again! German suplex! Matt Riddle just went from one end of the ring to the other, and he bounces up with a Superman punch. You gotta be kidding me! A Broton by Riddle. Springboard. Another variation of it. Lesnar has taken a lot of offense to those ribs throughout this matchup. Lesnar's had a history of midsection injuries throughout his career. Matt Riddle may be trying to take advantage of that tonight. Remember that tombstone pile driver earlier in this match? Lesnar speculated that may have just lit a, a fire underneath Brock, may have fed him some adrenaline, but that adrenaline may be wearing off, and Riddle is starting to pick up steam over a vulnerable, bloody alpha male. Lesnar sent into the corner by Matt Riddle, but a counter by Brock, and the challenger delivers a knee to the chest, a kick to the heart, trying to stomp out the soul of the face of Monday Night Raw. The champion's got other plans, another reversal. Win, lose, or draw, we are going to be talking about this main event for a long time in the case of Matt Riddle, who is hanging in there and giving the Beast the fight of his life and vice versa. Lesnar to his feet. Wait a minute, Riddle dead center of the ring for a third time in the match. Hits the bro, Derek. Lesnar may be out. And Brock Lesnar has been victimized by the WWE Champion. Matt Riddle continues to survive, continues to keep fighting, and even in an underdog position tonight, has shocked the world and has proved his doubters wrong yet again. Still the WWE Champion here at Vengeance. Here is your winner, and still, the WWE Champion, the original bro, Matt Riddle. We just witnessed an absolute human car wreck inside of that ring, but even through everything the Beast Incarnate had to give, Matt Riddle lives to fight another day as your reigning, defending WWE Champion. The original bro wins again in Vancouver. An absolutely amazing night. Quite frankly, our biggest live premiere event to date. Vancouver, Canada, and Vengeance going down in the history books. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And good night from Vancouver. on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back, I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat, gonna see me rise, you can hate on that, I don't play both sides, doing me no cap, I'm a rock